All right, welcome to the Sebe cast number 36 with BC Guffy again. <laughs> what up, yeah, BC surprise, Guffy? Surprise, guys. I'm taking the, the guest spot for the third time, baby. You, you <laughs> thought you were sick of me after one cast? Well, now we're on the number three, baby. And any of the any of the patrons of the Sebe cast know that there's like two deleted, two like full compiled deleted scenes of the, of the BC Guffy cast, too. We so. got... I got two casts prior to this one. This is going to be the third one. We have two sets of deleted scenes for me and a ramble. Like, I'm basically <laughs> yeah, taking ramble. over the Sebe cast at this point, fellas. <laughs> and it doesn't look like I'm going anywhere anytime soon. So, yeah, if you don't like me, well, you're going to have to click the uh, the X button on your browser or your phone or whatever. Because, yeah, I'm here to stay, baby. So, listen, guys. This is, like, the first ever week well, I guess, like, the first Sebe cast, I didn't have any discussion points. I don't think. I'm starting to forget. No, I think... Well, uh, we had Twitter topics, but this time we're going in with absolutely zero yep. Twitter topics. Nothing. Nothing. And I feel like we'll be just fine. <laughs> we're we're going to see how it goes. Yeah. Th th this is going to be, like, the the stealth cast where we're just going to upload the this, uh, this cast and uh, just see how it fares on YouTube. Just, yeah, well... Uh, yeah, I guess you can keep going from there. Yeah, no, that's uh, pretty much. Yeah, so we had a, I, I had a guest that was planned. He bailed, or he didn't really bail. It is complicated, but things come, things happen. Yeah, things happen. Things so uh, things came up, and then uh, on Friday or uh, like Thursday or Friday, I asked Guppy like, "Hey, would you be on it again?" Because definitely one of like the fan favorite episodes. So. I reluctantly agreed, and yeah, I got to shout out my own cast. Is that arrogant? Maybe I just should shout out the the people who enjoyed my cast, because uh, <laughs> like I was very surprised at how impactful my cast was. Um, like people were comparing it to like some of the some of those great people that were already on. Like like you've had some serious stars show up on your cast with the faux cast happening recently. Rendy happened recently. Like you have had people like Rig on like long time. Yep, content creators, and, and it feels like the past like five or so casts have all featured content creators, and and then there's little old me who barely has a running <laughs> Twitch channel, and uh, a YouTube channel with like one video that popped off, but other than that, I've like basically got like zero online presence outside of Discord, so it's yeah, no, it's, it's kind of a big change of pace with me being on. Yeah, I wouldn't say it's a huge change of pace. I tried to get on like some big guests, and then. Some like smaller because we had like Sakon on, we had Lopsy. They're kind of like smaller, yeah, content sure. creators, but they're still content creators. Yeah. Whereas I'm like, exactly, oh yeah, that is true at all. True. Um, but yeah, again, like like I just want to stress that uh, me me being on the cast, uh, like little old me, and then people really appreciating some of my talking points. Like it, it makes me really happy to have contributed so so much to to this cast because I am very invested in it at this point. Like I've listened to probably like 95 percent of the cast and to say that i've contributed strongly so strongly uh it really uh, humbles me so thanks to all those people that are saying good things about my cast and no promises that this one's gonna be a banger as well but uh yeah we're just gonna He's scared. have fun we were talking earlier and he was scared that the bar is set too high now he doesn't want to like <laughs> well i, I don't want to talk too highly about myself but but <laughs> no okay i do want to mention though it, that, that uh so so sebe he comes to me asking to do a cast because the previous guest bails and he wants to do like a secret cast where he just doesn't even ask twitter like he he pretends on twitch like oh yeah we're just gonna we're just not going to have a cast on Tuesday. No one's going to be on. Don't get your hopes up. And then he just drops a cast randomly with a, with one of the, uh, I guess, favorite guests. Returning. And then he yeah. just surprises his audience. But uh, I was I was stressing so hard to him, please don't try to, like, tease this on Twitter as, like, a secret <laughs> guest. Because yeah. you had Fo on, right? Like, yeah. like people they... are going to speculate, like, oh, shit, he's going to have Mod Ash on the cast. Or he's going to have Bodhi. And then and then my dumbass shows up like, hey guys, I'm I'm here for like the fourth time, and then people are just like, oh, why did he even try to, <laughs> you know, why did he even try to hint at a Poggers yeah. guest when it's just this asshole <laughs> again <laughs> for like the fourth time? But yeah, yeah. The, the, he, no, I he didn't, didn't. He didn't. Uh, I didn't say shit. Hint anything on Twitter. He didn't say shit. No, no leakers. Any any leakers in the chat? Yeah. Um. No, nobody so, knows. Yeah. Nobody <laughs> knows. I did. I was getting close my last stream, and I was like, I gotta fucking end this stream before I start. Oh leaking, god, so. you had to end the stream. Yeah. 
But no, um, so, but here's the cool thing about having you on now is like, Raids 3 has been announced, Group Iron Man's been announced, I mean, I don't really do leagues, but like, leagues has been announced, like, all these new things have been announced, Dead Man Mode, I don't, you know, there's enough coverage on Dead Man Mode already, I think we got a lot of meat and potatoes just with like, Raids 3 and, uh. I have no idea what's happen. going on with Dead Man Mode these days, I just hear, uh, PvP content and I'm just like, okay when, well that's not for me <laughs> yeah when i got foe on the cast i was like i gotta study up a little bit on dead man mode before i look like a dumbass so i yeah and i knew we were gonna talk about a lot stuff. a lot about raids 3 this cast because like like i didn't really look at the rewards too much i just saw like at a glance what they were but but uh last night i was like preparing uh like doing some dps calculations just to see exactly like how powerful these rewards were or how weak they were um, so I, I got a little bit of homework to, to present to the class, a little bit of show and tell. So, so uh, before we be talking about that for sure. I guess before the, you know, the homework or whatnot about Raids 3, let's just briefly go into who are you, BC Guppy, for those that have never listened to a BC Guppy cast and those that may be interested in listening to the prior ones. Who yeah, are so you? I guess I guess that's pretty important to do right away before we start getting yeah. into the the meat and the potatoes of the cast. So yeah, I'm BC Guppy. I'm a really long time Iron. I'm a super old Iron Man, all things considered. I started playing like like three or so months after Iron Man came out, and I've been playing the same account basically the entire time. So you've got six years of uh, Iron Man experience, uh, or I've got six years of Iron Man experience behind my belt, which is a lot more than most. I predate Sabe by like two years. Yeah. Um, at least. So yeah, I've been playing for a long time. Uh, I've I've come up with lots of innovative methods over the years. Like uh, like I, I've got some pretty cool videos on my YouTube channel that you can see of, of stuff that I came up with, and, and even stuff that isn't on my YouTube channel I've come up with. Like uh, like uh, there's, there's all kinds of things. Like I was the first person to take blood brush to Zami, like to really show it off, and I was doing that before you could even get to God Wars uh on ancients as an iron because th this was before redirection scrolls right so you oh, had shit. to like you had to like hike up there if you wanted to bring ancients as an iron to to god wars but yeah i was one of the first people to really show off how powerful it was there like uh venonatus uh step back method with acb i came up with the zero damage method with acb i i could go on on stuff that, that i've come up with over the years but uh, i'll have it yeah, i'll basically... have your at least your youtube linked i know there's only a couple videos on there but yeah, it'll be linked if you want to check out, like, some of the stuff I've done. It's got very little on there. Like, I've only come out with a few videos. But, uh, yeah, to summarize myself, like, like of course, if you haven't watched the, the BC Guppy cast, or, or even one of them, like, I strongly recommend if you're interested in uh, the other Sebe cast. Mine is definitely a good listen, I think. It's a long but listen, to, su too. to summarize, like, some of my, uh, my uh, strong suits on that cast, like... Like I'm pretty passionate about the game, so you really get to to hear me spilling out my uh, passion for RS on that cast. You can really feel the energy flowing there. Uh, like I've got lots of ideas of the direction that the game can go into. I and uh, I just I'm have, obviously I'm gonna chime invested. in. For sure. I'm gonna Before. chime in and just say like, so BC Guppy is like so passionate about the game. He literally came out with an entire like spreadsheet of how to like rework every basically weapon and monster in the game to like bring back balance to the game when when there was talking about like the blowpipe nerf and all that other stuff like bc guppy and uh i know i know ge challenge was a little involved with like getting the balance just right but like they were going deep into what could really bring this balance back to uh weapons and stuff like that in the game so yeah that's a topic in a, and of itself because jagex likes to nerf things only when they've become like a massive problem and they don't really do like maintenance yeah. to their balance like they don't do little things that would improve balance long term they just they basically just band-aid fix stuff if it becomes a problem for too long like you can take a look at how and see how long void range was like oh god bugged for like it, it was a 21 percent uh uh, range bonus for a very long time, or I should say, twenty-one percent damage, ten percent accuracy. It, it, it was like that for so long, and it took them so long to fix the blowpipe. We all know was very overpowered for many years. Six years of blowpipe devastation, and only now because <laughs> it's been like 
many, many years since they even introduced anything to do with ranged, right? Yep. And it's because of this elephant in the room of, of the blowpipe being so strong. And it, it took them six years to finally figure out, oh shit, we should probably nerf this so we can add new content again. And uh, and yeah, they did that. But going back to, to myself, like, uh, like yeah, I'm just a really passionate player. Um, I, I do like math quite a bit, and I have done lots of... Uh, like calculations seeing uh what uh what would work for an equipment rebalance like i was doing my own speculation on that and i did come out with a, a notepad file that has a whole bunch of changes that i'd love to see added to the game things that i think are almost necessary for the game but yagex just uh you know yagex be yagex and they don't really uh change much unless it's a huge problem but yeah um that, that's pretty much me uh again i'd love to recommend myself uh as a listen on the previous save cast yeah. Uh, and other what, than that, I don't think there's much to say about myself. I'm just a somber, non-content creator kind of guy. We uh, definitely just, just playing the game, having a good time. We definitely had a lot of speculation on raids three, like that. I feel like the majority of just the pretty, like uh, the first twenty episodes of a Sebe cast, even probably more than that, were just so focused on like these future updates that just hadn't come out yet. People were getting sick of it, too, in the comment section. People were like, okay, can you guys stop talking about Raids 3 and stuff? It's like, nothing's <laughs> happened yet. So we finally get to talk about it. And I'm pretty pleased to just uh, have a just a few slivers of my ideas, like, in Raids 3. Uh, I think the Lightbearer Ring is a uh, an example of one of those things. Where Shout I was... out Save Agenda. <laughs> the Save Agenda coming in strong, but... Also, uh, the two tick wand, and watching the summer summit live, I remember just listening, and they were like, "We're gonna come out with a wand that attacks at two cycles." I'm like, "Holy fuck! There's no <laughs> way! There's no way Arcane just said that! Like, this has to be a joke." But um, nah, it's it's really exciting. And then there's like some really cool armor and this new amulet that's coming out. So. I guess let's Dude, just... we've been so long overdue for a new raid. Holy shit, yeah. it took so long. And it's still not out yet. So Yeah, we gotta wait until <laughs> like winter twenty seventeen exactly. for that shit. When when is it planned yeah. on being released? I think it's it's like, like early 2021, next year. Twenty twenty one, early twenty twenty one, yeah. So it's gonna 2022. be like uh I think uh I think Chambers of Zarek was released in Jan in, in a January of twenty seventeen, I yeah. think. Yep. So this is probably going to be like January, February of 2021, I think. You said 2021 like four times. 2022, just making sure we're not. Oh, in the, this oh, is shit. not a. This is not oh, a pre-recorded it, it is, cast. It's already 2021. Oh <laughs> yeah, my god, dude! This is I'm not a pre-recorded cast, my friends. <laughs> 2022. Okay, there you yeah, go. Good. Yeah, it, it it is not 2020 anymore, fellas. <laughs> Um, uh yeah it, it was uh really fun I, I didn't watch it live i i just watched the vod but i was relatively unspoiled um i think i think my good friend qhp shadowed him he was like shout out QHP. turn on the tv there's raids three turn on cnn they announced raids three i'm just like oh shit they actually did it so i watched the entire vod and like their whole announcement stuff uh Oh my god, listening to Mod Ed go off is, was so great. He's got, like, the perfect voice for doing an announcement. He was being all, like, epic yeah. when he was doing his announcement. Like, Tombs of the Mask, <laughs> Raids 3, 2022. I was I was watching the deleted scenes. They had, like, a little YouTube upload of, like, the deleted scenes of those announcements. Just showing them, like, fuck up and stuff. And Ed, dude, <laughs> Ed has a dirty mouth, man. Like... It, he had so many bleeps, like they would just bleep it out because it's the old school. Was he channel. swearing? Yeah, <laughs> but it was. But it was. I like, thought he would be going off script, so that's something he wouldn't even do. I don't even know, but it was just funny as fuck, like watching those deleted scenes. I was actually laughing. Sometimes, like you could just imagine it would be really cringe to watch, but no, it was, it was good. Um, that's uh, that's funny. Yeah, mod Ed's awesome. Mod Arcane, just fucking legend. And then uh, mod Arcane, mod Husky, mod Kieran, uh, when he you know does stuff lately he hasn't done in like anything i think he's doing like a managerial role but yeah we have some very very good j mods mod ed like like i, I love mod ed mod ed is is great and he's i think awesome. he's really underrated yeah he is but yeah the 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 backbone of the team right now is basically like we got ash on the coding side he, he doesn't really like make too much uh, like new content like he, he just kind of does like the the stuff behind the scenes that makes the game work he just yeah 
makes all feels, the spaghetti yeah. come together pretty much. Um, but yeah, Arcane, Kieran, Husky, Ed, they're like the ones that are actually pushing the game forward. Yeah. And I'm really grateful to have new J mods. I remember when Kieran was like brand new, I'm just like, who is this guy? Because this was when he was on the Q&A and he was like being all shy. Yeah. And yeah. then he came to the next Q&A a week later and he was popping off out of his mind. And, and it was like a, there was a brand new person on the couch. And since then, he's 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 basically like made the game last as long as it has with the uh, like new raids. He he did Inferno like by himself pretty much. Like Mod Kieran is a god, but Mod Kieran's so awesome. If I ever see him on a Q and A, like if I see his name mentioned, I'm there because he's he's just a legend and he's like just really positive. Yeah, he's, he's always got that smiling. Positivity going for yep. him. Yeah, that, that's the thing I love the most about Kieran. Yep. I just wish we we saw more from him because he just does manager shit now yeah it feels like he doesn't even have too much of a say in like brand new content or maybe he just doesn't uh care as much maybe he's past his prime but we still we love kira yeah yeah, yeah we... like going back to what we were saying like yeah i i did watch the vod for for the raids 3 announcement uh really exciting stuff um there, there were some things that uh I wasn't like too pleased with like this cursed uh, beneath cursed sands quest. It's like another master level quest, and I feel like the game <laughs> does not need more master level quests. Um, but they end up being just so mild. Like, like I was really hoping for a uh, dual reveal of not only raids three in the desert, but also desert treasure two as like a new grandmaster quest that that could tie into that somehow. Um, because all these master level quests like. Like, Fremenic Exiles was a master level quest for for yeah, those of was... you uh, wanting, like, a reference on what a master level quest is like. And that was a complete disappointment to many people. I'll be honest. M my opinion on things is, like, yeah, I, I had... I did have quite a bit of fun with, like, Dragon Slayer 2 and Monkey Madness 2. Monkey Madness 2 was actually my favorite quest. Uh, and everybody hated that quest. But I fucking loved it. And I think the reason I loved it was because I didn't fail that barter... Uh, part where like you're going on that boat or like the little floating the airship yeah 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 that thing uh like I didn't fail that thing getting all the dynamite in the crates or whatnot or in the backpacks so yeah I don't think I failed it either I um, think if you failed that you hated the quest if you fail. yeah, yeah. If, you, <laughs> if you failed that you instantly hated it but if you got past it it was fun like you didn't feel like you were getting held up so. But uh, those Grandmaster quests have some real weight to them. You can feel it, like uh, yeah, like it feels like you can just like die at any time. Like, like uh, they they do feel challenging. The bosses are actually somewhat engaging. You don't roll over them with a uh, yeah over leveled, uh, over geared. I don't. Uh, I don't really mind though having just a really simple quest. But maybe that's just because I just want to get to the the actual content raids three i don't want to be like spending four hours doing a fucking light puzzle and stuff like that i i will say um because they're not adding metaphos with raids three that does leave me uh speculative that they're going to come out with desert treasure 2 very soon after and that's going to be the thing that unlocks metaphos and then you're going to have a, a brand new content update with metaphos they're basically giving the desert the mauritania treatment where they just do like just non-stop desert updates for two years and then it's finally flushed out and uh looks amazing afterwards because yeah like they introduced uh tob and then like afterwards they they did nightmare and slept and all that and i was so surprised like like they just did a mauritania update like why are they doing another one but it makes sense now because now, now they've like finished mauritania and they can move on to the next thing yeah. So that, that that's that is the next thing is the desert. So yeah. I I do think there will be a desert treasure two coming soon. Maybe it'll be teased in the new, uh, the new quest, the beneath cursed sands. Oh, definitely. Uh, so yeah, that, that I guess I guess now that I think about it, like I'm kind of excited for beneath cursed sands now because I know it's gonna probably tease desert treasure two, and and the direction that the that that quest line might be going into. So that'll be really fun to actually, uh, see what they do there. So. Okay, I don't know what we should talk about first. I I, I kind of want to talk about not yeah. just go straight into the rewards. No Twitter topics, and we're we're just not even sure what to get into yet. I, I, I just this. don't know if we get into the rewards first of, of of raid three or kind of how the raid goes because what they said is like you go into like a main hall, and there's five bosses or something like that or six bosses, and you get to choose which ones you kill first. 
but you still yeah, have to do all. Yeah, that's a really interesting uh, concept. Uh, so, so I, I, again, I didn't really get into like raids three two too much. Uh, so I don't actually like like I read through the poll, but I just skimmed through it, and I'm just like, okay, I kind of trust that the team's gonna do something really cool for the raid. So. I trust that their ideas are going to be good, but from what I could tell, there's like an upper echelon kind of part of the raid. Like this is going to be like a tomb-based raid, so it's going to be underground. But you're going to be at like basement floor one, basement floor two. It's going to be the upper part of the raid with like four different bosses that you have to all clear, and then you get to the bottom echelon, which is like maybe a couple more bosses before the the final boss, and then the final boss is always the same. Yeah. And then they have this. Uh, invocation system yeah where you can go into the raid with uh modifications that will uh make it either harder or easier really really smart implementation by the way because you can make your raid accessible while also not uh alienating your your like older players your, your more veteran players that are looking for a challenge yep so so it's gonna be a case of uh unlike uh chambers of Zarek and tov you're gonna have the, the challenge mode on release, which is really exciting, and that's how all raids should be introduced, I think. And entry mode on release. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so the people that are bitching that the raid is too hard or too easy can just modify it to their will. Yeah. Um, the most difficult, uh, like, uh, like all invocations, uh, or I guess maybe not all invocations, but all the ones that make the raid harder, I should say. Like, if you if you play with all of those on, like, it should be very challenging, but also yeah. very rewarding at the same time. I I just trust that the team will be able to to do this correctly to get a good balance right i think um, they're gonna make it on paper their uh their design philosophies are very solid i yeah. think no i think it's gonna be amazing dude okay have you killed any fasani's nightmare that is the only thing i do in game at the moment <laughs> bro okay i want to hear your thoughts in in my opinion they fucking nailed it that is the best like, that is one of the most fun bosses now in the entire game, in my opinion. You talk super highly of it, and it surprises me, because I, I don't think it's that much different Bro, than it is, regular. No, 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 no. Oh, my God, dude. It is so <laughs> much different. It is literally, dude. Okay, so when the combat achievement... Oh, we also got to talk about combat achievements, but... When... Oh shit! That we didn't even talk about that before <laughs> we haven't even mentioned. Oh it. no! There's so much. So listen, um, uh, Fasani's when it came out, like, okay, so no, no, sorry. When combat achievements came out, they said, oh, you have to go back and like do a solo nightmare and sub sixteen and all this stuff, dude. That was misery. That was actual hell. Like that. You did the one kill for combat achievements and you hated it. Yeah, I was like, how the fuck did I do this twenty nine hundred times, like soloing this for nine months straight, basically? I honestly didn't understand how I did it because it was like horrible. And uh, for well, Sonic's, is just fucking fun. Like you just go there and it's like quick and there's no like RNG aspect. It's like you can't really get fucked over too hard unless like the end. You well, just, there's okay. no RNG. Um... But like, like, of course the fight is shorter, but but uh, I just do two kill trips anyway, so it feels like it's the same thing. I uh, like uh, like how do I get started here? Like like maybe I think you probably dislike Nightmare a lot because of the way you did it. Like you did so much one tick flicking, like just horrendous quality of life there. <laughs> yeah. And you also went in with tons of like Phoenix necklaces and and you weren't using Blood Fury and stuff. Like yeah. I kind of trivialized the boss by like doing a whole bunch of Ire thieving and. And having a whole bunch of uh, charges on my Blood Fury to to make the fight as like quality of life as possible, and and at the point I was at, like it was like really nice grinding it almost in a sense. Okay, so so you've been playing Iron for a long time, so you probably understand where I'm coming from when I say that when you do content for a while, or if you go draw dry on like a a drop that you need for a long time you get into this rhythm of doing the boss where you know you've mastered the content and you just like you just pull it off all the time and you're kind of in the zone yeah uh doing something uh and you know it's efficient and you're just like busting out tons of kc per day like like uh can you give any examples of of your iron man career where you've gotten to that like sort of in the zone state uh, uh on i mean specific bosses where you just like grind it all the time like you probably at that point already with Seracnus, where you oh, yeah, got this groove, right? Yeah. Like, you know what you're doing, and it's just a matter of just mindlessly, like, sort of yeah. 
grinding out the KC, but you're also being efficient at it at the same time. Like, make, maybe you've had a, an episode where you've been doing lots of solo raids. Yeah, no, to that, like I was going to say solo raids way back. Just yeah, so you, you've been there. Like, like I've been there many times. Yep. Like, I've been there doing solo raids, hunting for Tebow. I've been there doing solo CM for Omelet. Never got the Omelet, by the way, sad. Uh, I've been there... Or, like, bandos, like, when I got really good at, like, flicking bandos, where I was sort of, like, like, like I just get super comfortable with my method, and I'm just really happy to be executing it all the time, because I know I've mastered the content. Like, like I felt like like that with Nightmare at some point. Mm. I, I also felt like that at, at Corp, doing solo Corp, back when the food method was the only thing you could do. Like, I had this just rhythm. Like, my mind was just organized in a way that was yeah super efficient for doing the content and i felt like that with nightmare too where i knew what i was doing and i was really comfortable with the method i was doing and and it took like little brain power for me to do the boss because of how like efficient i got the, yeah. the method down and how little like brain energy it would take to do it so i got to that point and and when once i got to that point the boss was great i think but before that it was horrible because i was still like learning all the like the little things like to make things more efficient for it yeah and uh, before I got to that point, I absolutely hated it because I knew like I wasn't doing the boss efficiently, or I felt like I wasn't doing it efficiently because I I hadn't gotten into that rhythm yet. So you but don't think after I got into the rhythm, I I just grinded it all the time. You don't think Vasani's was a huge upgrade? You're just saying it's whatever. Well, I see the thing about Vasani, it's not that much hard. In fact, it's easier. It it's is easier. easier. It is easier, and that's why I fucking like it. <laughs> It's actually easier than a normal solo nightmare. Which it, is... It's definitely substantially better. I, I should probably preface this by saying it is much better, but I, don't, I still don't really see much of a difference. Like, the actual fight itself is more or less the same. It's just, like, sort of faster paced in a way. Like, like again, when I talk about this rhythm of getting, like, in, in this, into... Like, like, when you've become comfortable with a boss, like... Like, like it's great for me. Yeah. Um, when I was starting Vasani, I was like, I was like dying a couple times uh, to stuff that I didn't learn yet, and I wasn't in that rhythm. But I'm in the rhythm now for for doing Vasani, and that's all I do on my iron pretty much. Um, I, I haven't been playing the game a whole lot lately, but yeah, like, like I got into that rhythm for, with Vasani, where now I can just like listen to music or just be in voice chat, and just uh, just grind this. Uh, Hopefully until I get a mace soon. Yeah, it is funny that you say like Vasani's is easier because it legitimately is easier than a normal. Okay, so comparing, sorry, comparing a, a solo nightmare to like a solo normal nightmare to a Fasani's nightmare. The solo be normal nightmare is actually worse. It's harder and there's like you can't one shot husks. You can't one shot parasites. The parasite instantly starts healing. Whereas in Fasani's, you could literally wait there for like four ticks, and the parasite just <laughs> yeah. sitting there like a dumbass. The, like, the thing with with regular nightmare solos was that the parasite, like, like there were some really difficult to execute strategies with, yep. with spotting the parasite like on the correct tile. Like you'd lure you'd lure nightmare to the very north part of the room, get it like wedged in with the door, yeah, that's a and then you'd do. summon the parasite like on the very north. Uh, like I didn't the, even the very middle of the north uh, thing that lets you yeah, exit. Yeah, little portal thing. And then I... you would like scythe the parasite yeah. while it's under to do damage to nightmare. Like, and now you had just... to you had to have claws. Like, if you didn't have claws, you were basically like just taking chances all the time. Like claws. Oh were yeah, huge. death charge helped a lot with that. Yeah. I noticed. Like, I never get claws really... on almost every parasite. Yeah, I was surprised as well to see because I remember in the betas, uh, those totems. Like, you couldn't have a Thrall attack a totem. And then, in the actual game when it came out, Thralls could attack the totems. And I was like, damn, Harmonize just got, like, massively devalued. Because the Harmonize was, yeah. was, like... I wonder what they're going to do to the Harmonize now that there's a new upgraded Arcane as well. I was uh, talking about this last night um, with uh, QHP. And there was the mod arcane proposal that was just to make it into a like a pseudo powered staff where you can auto cast with it with regardless of your spellbook so you could use thralls with it yeah which which would uh make the harmonized staff significantly more powerful of course but i was thinking like what if elemental spells actually mattered like like what if there were actual you know elemental weaknesses in the game that mattered where you could be auto casting like 
air uh, like wind surge or something and it would be doing bonus damage to something that would be weak to wind or like like you know basic yep. stuff like water spells being exactly bonus damage to to fire creatures like stuff like that that you see in like every other mmo okay what about this like, i i mentioned this on twitter what if okay and I'm, I'm gonna make a stretch here because i was talking to west ham about it obviously west ham's a pvp here but like what if the harmonized staff could auto cast every single combat spell at four ticks and, I'm, and then uh, the first thing that was probably mentioned is four tick barrage is outrageously OP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> but you know what's funny is West Ham was saying that four tick barraging in a PvP situation wouldn't actually be that crazy OP because it's auto cast only. And if you ever want to do any switches, you're going to have to wait that uh, little delay. Because well, the Harmonized staff doesn't get that delay. That, no, no, it, that's the dumb thing about auto casting is that the harmonized staff has a special treatment where it doesn't oh, have that true. one. Oh, true. You're right. It, I wonder if it would do that then with the uh, with the delay. Yeah, because that was something that yeah that was an oversight on my part. That was something they fixed just for the harmonized staff, and it's and it's just to make it feel more like a powered staff. Like I wish I wish they applied that change to the entire game. Yeah, that would be nice. It's, it's really stupid that there's that tick delay. It just makes auto casting magic spells so bad yeah it does like like uh that shit where you had to like like in twisted league where you had to manually cast magic dart on ohm's right claw Yikes. because yep. auto cast delay exists like why yeah why is that it's still in the game and why was it only fixed for the harmonized stuff i don't i don't get that at yeah. all like okay like okay, they, so... they keep adding uh, so you go you go first okay so what if that is a good point because that is something where like West Ham was just saying, oh, there's like a there's a delay, and then I just considered, I just said, oh yeah, there is a delay, and I forgot that the harmonized actually removes that delay. So let's say it did every spell besides ancients. Now that's obviously a huge nerf, but like there are these uh, demonic spells on the Archaea spellbook that might get some fucking use potentially. Uh, I love how they released it, and then it was just so bad. It is bad. <laughs> in every form that you could never use it anyway. It, it's it's just so bad. Like, and then they made an cool. arbitrary uh, achievement where you have to go and use that spell with Krill. That was, so... that was fun, by the way. I we'll talk more about that. combat achievements because I had a lot of fun on the release. But yeah, like they released these Demon Bane spells, but they're just dead content on yeah. release because they just don't have enough DPS. And yeah. And anything that boosts accuracy with magic is just inherently bad, unless it's like seriously, seriously giving you just outrageous accuracy. Like, uh, well, e even in the case, like, like the Marin Scepter is like double accuracy, and it's still bad. It's so. Like, shit. we all know how shitty the Marin Scepter is. They, they need to fix. The it harm is better than a Thamarin Scepter, so like. In the wilderness, bro. It's yeah. <laughs> now it's like. It's just... <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah I don't know. I don't know what else they'll do with the harmonized stuff because it's in this really dumb spot where it's the only magic weapon in PvP that that's like outrageously strong. Like, like it. It's funny how the Trident of the Seas is banned in PvP. Yeah. You can't even like attack players with it. The Trident of the Swamp as well. Even the Sang. Like, you cannot use those in PvP. But then the harmonized staff comes out with Tomo Fire, and since it's auto cast, it does work in PvP. It's just like. Why? Yeah. Why don't just why not just permit the trident to work in PvP? Also, if I'm not mista mistaken, the blowpipe is still three tick in PvP. Is yep. that correct? Yep. Like why? Why are there these arbitrary restrictions? I think I, I think there is sort of a I don't know. There's kind of a good reason because like blowpipe at least like you don't lose anything. At least with the harm, if you die with that shit, you're losing the tome. You're losing all the runes with a blowpipe and a trident. Like it's all fucking charged shit. We're like. As long as you're protecting it, you don't lose anything. If you lost all the content inside of it, then I think it would be more balanced to like bring that out and have a two tick. That's true. You don't risk any ammunition with it. But yeah. then again, PvPers they bring like three dragon bolts with them in the wilderness anyway. Yeah. They just absolutely minimize the risk because <laughs> money is everything in PvP. You can't be risking 500k. You know, yeah. the Tome of Fire is like 500k even. Like if you die with it and you die with some bird pages, it's like yeah. 600k. Like p people nowadays they'll risk occults that are uh, like 300k. So I don't think people even mind uh, risking. Uh, okay, listen. I uh, again this is this is a say bay cast this is gonna be a ramble just talking about random stuff but so I mentioned this on my cast and I think you'd probably be a big fan of this you'd have to tell me but so 
you know how the occult does 10 percent magic damage whereas like yeah, every other outrageous. item slot does like fucking nothing negligible so what if okay and here's the other thing you know how augury is basically useless except as a tank uh, uh i wouldn't say that okay but, it's but not go useless anyway. it's go not on. useless like it obviously has it obviously is best in, best in slot to use if you, anything has magic uh I like a magic level like a monster has a magic level that's cool okay but what if augury actually had like a, a better use so what i was thinking is lower the occult to about six percent is what i was thinking make eternal boots have uh like a one or a two percent and then have the sears ring have like a one percent or something damage boost but then have uh, Aug okay so wait listen 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 and then augury again i i want to hear your things because i just i chat this stuff in my stream and everyone's like you know either they agree or they don't agree but there's no real discussion about it but um what if augury gave like a five percent it doesn't have to be five. I'm just saying five just because it's simple. But like 5% damage buff. But when you're praying it, you get 5% negated damage to you. So like if, if you're praying Augury and you get cast with like a magic attack, then like in a PvP situation, if you're both praying Augury, it would cancel out. But like any other monster that shoots you, it would actually negate 5% of that damage. But then if you're using Augury... You get that bonus. So I'm just thinking, like, it really is kind of a shame that if, if anything has zero magic defense, like, for example, a totem at, at Nightmare, it would be really cool if there was actually a prayer, like Augury, that you could actually pray, and it would give you some sort of fucking boost because it's an offensive magic prayer. You know what I mean? So the first thing I'll go off on is uh, people have been speculating for the mage prayers to, to add damage for years, right? Like, like they're noticeably very bad compared to their uh, melee and range equivalents. So if you're going to touch Augury, you should probably touch the other mage prayers as well. Like make them just make things like progressive, right? Like, yeah. So what about 1%, 2%, 3%, 4%? Well, not even that much. You, what, 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 what should happen is uh, you could like tone down the base damages of the powered staves and trident and stuff and maybe, maybe nerf stuff like Toma fire on the harmonized staff. And then, like add those, uh, add those damages to the mage prayers so that you have a uh, like linearity with all the all the combat styles where you've got augury giving you you know twenty five percent more damage. Yeah, that would take a and, huge and then the prayers would be work. very important. Yeah. Like like you could do that if you're gonna make it so that like you know one percent two percent kind of thing. It's like why is melee twenty three percent more damage yeah. and then mage is like five percent. Like, like, I'd like there to be linearity between all the different prayers so that you have this uh, very simple design uh, that, that everyone can understand. What do you think so about... So if you're going to do that, you could probably, like, rework Mage as a whole. It, it does need reworking, to be fair. Mage is very fucked at the moment. If you guys so... are curious how, why Mage is fucked and what they could do to it, the BC Guppy cast, I think it was... I can't even remember if it was part one or part it two. It was anymore. the first one. It was for the sure, first part. Okay, so we talk about that there. BC Guppy has a lot of great ideas for how you should basically rework magic and what like the best the pros of it would be like for the health of the game. So just gotta give a shout. The there. Uh, one of the big points uh, that I had to fix mage was to make magic weapons actually matter, like uh, like range weapons matter. Because uh, the code I want, for example, is plus 28 mage accuracy, which is so small when you compare best in slot range weapons, where it's like heavy ballistas plus 125, uh, armadillo crossbows plus 100, and it's weird that mage doesn't have that same sort of linearity. Like, like it's it's so weird how different mages, uh, just because they, just because it was like so strange in 2007, and then when they add new content, it's like. They, they keep that same parallel with how it used to be they they have this uh uh the status quo that they have to work around but they they could completely rework the status quo by having kodai be like plus 95 mage accuracy sort of in line with like top level uh range uh weapons yep um you can really uh you can balance mage weapons a lot better in that sense because you can have stuff like staff of the dead oh plus 70 like you can have in between okay so 
where they actually do matter. So what would they do about like mage armor then? Because like melee armor doesn't give melee accuracy, but mage armor does. That seems to be the bulk. Like if you wear an ancestral top and ancestral bottoms, that's huge compared to just a single weapon. So what what would change for the armor? So would you just keep that? Oh, I, I would keep everything as the way it is. Like, like I think Ancestral Top is, like, plus 35 mage accuracy. That That's pretty in line with what range is at the moment. Like, Armadil Chestplate, I think, is plus 33. So, like, everything about mage and range, as far as, like, attack bonus, is relatively the same. Um, What's the uh, Dragonfire Ward uh, and, like, the Twisted Buckler ranged accuracy? It's, like in the 20s right arcane for mage I think is it's plus, plus 20 as well everything about range and mage in terms of equipment is pretty parallel except for the weapons where yeah you have such tiny differences i saw a suggestion on reddit that was like it was like uh making the mystic staves better <laughs> and i just laughed because it's just like it was adding like plus two accuracy yeah. to, to Mystic compared to uh, yeah. It's because battle like staves. it's like so small. Like, what yeah. difference is it's, this it's gonna be, make? It's because and those are the, the the these are the ideas that I'm coming out with because I don't want something that's just not gonna happen. Like for example, a complete rework in Magic. Like it's just it's basically ruled out in my mind that it can even happen because Jagex is just not gonna put put the time and effort into it. And nor who knows if the community would even want it because it's just too big of a shift. Where it would bring balance, but like it would just really rework the game. So I'm thinking of these little things, and again, that guy probably was too. Just these slight buffs, just because we're all so, I don't know. We all just kind of assume nothing game-changing is really ever going to happen. Like Again, super Jagex doesn't like to do maintenance updates. That they, they only update things when they become a problem. They don't update things before they become a problem. And at the moment, Mage is looking like it's going to become a problem soon because the Harmonized Staff is going to like, yeah. die overnight because this new uh, this new Hekka wand that's coming out from Raid 3 is just going to inherently just be better in every single possible way to the Harmonized Staff because of uh, it's it can be used in tandem with rolls. So okay. So what do you think about here? Let me go to the wand. Uh, oh, the Hekka is that what it's called? Hekka of Tumakin or something? Yeah, Hekka of Tumakin. <laughs> okay, so it attacks. Three attacks are two ticks. One attack is four tick. That's a bigger hit splat, or just it has more damage potential. Yeah, that's correct. So I think it's appropriate that we talk about this first because this is the most powerful reward coming from Red Three by by a very large amount. It, it's so it has this weird thing where it it's too tick until it's not. It's got this variable attack speed, which is like interesting, but th this interesting factor of the weapon is like kind of redundant when you consider that the actual DPS of the thing is just gonna be better than a Sang anyway. So it it's basically like it's got this niche sort of a uh, thing going for it like they're advertising it as like some unique thing where it'll be like really good for like something like nylacus where you're attacking a whole bunch of things at once but in reality it's just going to completely replace every other <laughs> mage weapon everywhere because yeah. its damage is just too high also i want to talk about um on the raids 3 blog they ha they have this formula for how the damage is going to work on it <laughs> jagex uh is doing something that doesn't make any sense at all what they're doing is for the the two tick hits, the your mage bonus is gonna matter less for it. So it takes only a percentage of your mage strength bonus on the on the two tick hits, so that your mage damage isn't affecting it as much. And then they're making mage your mage damage bonus matter more for the four tick hit. And I just want to talk about how redundant that is because they talk about how the blowpipe is really strong because like it's two tick and it scales like twice as fast with with the uh, max hits right yeah but the thing with mage is that mage doesn't use mage strength like like range does like all range strength additions for range are additive but for mage it's multiplicative yep. it's, it's actually multiplying your damage instead of adding on to it so what they're doing with this two tick staff is completely redundant because it's percentage based anyway um a 10 percent damage bonus um a multiplicative damage bonus is going to be doing the same thing to a two-tick weapon as compared to a four-tick weapon. Um, so <laughs> they've already got, like, you know, 
properly scaling damage for mage, but they still end up just making this weird ass formula anyway for how the damage works, so that your equipment is actually mattering less as a result. So and it's, it's like so stupid that Jagex would do this. Okay, so here's my question. So I was watching somebody doing. I can't even remember the streamer, but somebody was doing the beta world with the wand at chambers at the hand. I think it was Tip or something. Maybe I saw a clip of Tip Brickety doing uh, the little movement, like how you would do it basically with the wand. And it looks cool, and it's obviously best in slot and stuff and with the shield as well and everything. But, like, in my eyes, I would love to hear, uh, you know, a coherent, like, I guess – argument not really an argument but just something that is explaining why the wand needs to even switch to four tick why can't it just be a two tick weapon because like i don't know i just feel like it's so arbitrary that just it is this... arbitrary there's no reason for it if if they just want to come out with powered staff number four and have it best in the slot they can just do that but but They're the cool thing is weird like weird mechanic this wand okay i first of all is a little disappointed that it's a six tick attacking range and i'm pretty sure you can just extend it to f yeah that's even it's more too dumb like it's too far casting i feel like i feel like it needs to be short i feel like it needs to have that niche of like just being short be, or else it'll just be used everywhere i feel like it that's my opinion i feel like it attacks too long of a range um I don't know what your opinion is on it. I feel well, like why why does it need this this nerf to it? Like why does I think it does end need game a nerf. raid content have to be side grades all the time where you've got you know like oh you get this but oh you've also got this and this and this to, to worry about like like why not just have no because know, if it's gonna be powerful... best in slot DPS everywhere over a sang and a trident and everything and uh... well you say everywhere but in reality like barrage tasks exist like like ice barrage exists like, yeah, yeah but i'm i'm, I'm comparing it to like a sanguinesti like a sanguinesti yeah, everywhere well, i guess like, it everywhere has healing would be used you would be using this instead yeah. you are right i guess but i guess the again, sang has it, like healing and stuff but like the problem is that mage isn't even good to begin with so anywhere where mage isn't good this this new uh thing will not get used anyway like, like you have uh, things that break the mold, like the twisted bow gets used where range is typically not even used, like stuff like uh, like ice team and like people love t bowing ice team and and it works great because of how crazy strong the t bow is. I, I think even the scythe is capable of of uh, competing with range in places where melee is not typically used as well. But but this new wand, it is strictly an upgrade to Sang in ev in every way. Um, except for stuff where the niche is really powerful, like Nihilus, like where you're one hitting Nihilus two tick instead of four tick. Um, so it, it's just basically gonna replace Sang everywhere that Sang is used, which is sad that it's got all these like weird things added onto it that don't make any sense. So what would you say? What would be like the most optimal? Me, in my opinion, I think it should just be two tick, and I think it should be shorter range because it does outclass everything, and that shorter range will make the Sanguine SD have use. In fact, what would have been really cool is if, in my opinion, is using that wand in conjunction with the Sanguine SD for like solo raid running, like the mage hand, where like every time you go to the very far part of the melee hand, you'd have to switch to a Sang right there, and then you'd like switch back to your wand or whatever for like the, the closer hits. But now is it's that just... not? Uh... So I haven't seen Tipper Kitty doing this like old mage running method with the with the tuka it's pretty cool whatever looking. it's called um so you can actually do the entire claw yep. um do you take damage from ulm nope it's completely oh, so, so there's actually a method where you can run yep run ulm and you i don't okay. think you lose any ticks either so yeah it would be cool to have this mechanic where you can like switch to sang but like i'm just really thirsty for really powerful stuff to come from race three right? but then like, isn't this exactly what you want then because this is really really powerful well it's not like that much like, like compare compare like going from a tebow or, or or sorry compare going from a blowpipe to a tebow or even like a like a crossbow at zilliana to a tebow it's like crazy power difference yeah. and that's and that's what end game raids uh, gear should be i know they're trying to prevent power creep like, they're really trying to p prevent power creep, but they're going too far about it. They're releasing power creep too slow, and they're adding too many side grades, too much, like, this and that. 
we'll, we'll talk more about the rewards as we go. The Tukka obviously is is very very powerful, and it's the most powerful thing to come from Raids Three. But again, like Mage is in this really weird spot where, like, it's just like the only things that are specifically designed to be maged is getting maged at the moment. You you can't. Uh, you can't really take mage to bandos anymore these days because you've got this new fancy bow that's just outrageously out DPSing everything else in the game, and uh, and this problem with with bosses as they have uh, currently is that like there's not much variety in the meta like like oh you've got to do this and this and this against this and this and there's not much uh, variation like like you can't get away with using the wrong style of bosses these days just because of how they're designed like like new bosses I'll, I'll, I'll give some examples like stuff like Seracnus, uh stuff like Nightmare like like they're so scared of range being good that they give them like plus yeah. 3000 range defense yeah. and it's like why can't you range these things like why does it have yeah. to be like practically indestructible to range why, why can't they like balance the defensive bonuses so that you can like use a variety of styles like like what happened at bandos for one at one time or even like something like mithril dragons before lance like mithril dragons before lance was in a really interesting spot where all three combat styles were like equally good and you could use all three um depending on like what your account build is what you wanted to do to them like what xp you wanted to get you could choose like what you like how you wanted to approach this but yeah but the way jagex design stuff nowadays is they don't give you that that freedom liberty to mm -hmm. to choose what you want to do to them like you have to use this style you have to use crush you have to use stab etc cetera, etc cetera. yeah and and they don't have a variety in the meta like, even ohm hand was really awesome because you just use any weapon style like you could i mean for the for the melee hand it used to just be like you could host it you could i would bludgeon my when i when i first did raids it i'd bring my bludgeon to flex and i'll just use my bludgeon on <laughs> the melee hand like i did that as well because uh it was fun like uh like there was a time where there was no lance there was no exactly uh, you know like like bludgeon just came out uh or i don't i don't remember the exact timeline but there was a point where bludgeon was like the best crush weapon right yep so you would bring a crush weapon to the raid for something like tecton and then and then you could actually use your bludgeon on the left claw because uh the next best best thing was like a abyssal tentacle yeah and did you really want to use like those tentacle charges was it really worth the switch and bludgeon just worked fine on it but now yeah. you've got like oh yeah you have to use lance like there's there's no variation yeah. at all and that's what sucks is they add this niche yeah. they, they've been adding all this niche uh, equipment uh, but all it's been doing is just making it so that you have to use this item to be best yeah. inside. Like, like uh, Cerberus had a, an interesting meta for a time where you could use uh, you could use a crush weapon, you could use a Tebow, you could just use like a blowpipe. But now, now they, now it's just oh yeah, just arc light, dude. Yeah. Like oh yeah, this dude, free thing. You okay. Get request, have you done Cerberus with an arc light, Bandos, and a Blood Fury? I, I haven't because I, I still use Scythe on Crush, right? Which dude. is still the best, but... No, 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 no. Dude, go to... The next time you get a Cerberus task, use max strength with Bandos, so something tanky. You need you can't use Inquisitors, and then use an Arc Light. You can literally go there with, like, two or three super combat, like Divine Super <laughs> Combats, and an entire inventory of Prayer Pots. I'm not kidding. No food. You do not need any food. You don't even need an SGS. Just bring Claws. You, <laughs> you will get like a twenty-five to thirty kill trip, and you, and you won't can ever bring eat like twenty mil gear. <laughs> you won't it's ever so eat. Sad. It is, dude. Blood Fury is just like, what the fuck is this? Like, it's. So... I was using Blood Fury with Scythe on Crush uh, as a switch, and yeah, you can stay as long as you want now. <laughs> now, Arc, yeah, like, Arc Light and Bandos one... was just because. Uh, so I mean, I do have a mace now. Uh, and I was using full Inquisitors with a mace at Serb, and it was horrible. I was just taking way too much damage, and then I just oh, yeah. switched oh, to Arc Light, yeah. and I was like, okay, this is actually stupid. So, yep, mace on Serb. Oh yeah, by the way, Arc Light's better now. Yeah. Uh, like on on paper, mace is better DPS Barely. with full Inquisitor, but yeah. yeah, have fun bringing full Inquisitor to Cerberus, and then yeah. you're just getting your ass beat when you could just be taking full Bandos with Arc Light, and it's like, yep practically the same dps but you know um it's just you got all that da all that defense going for you and, and uh, at you least a blood fury and just stay forever yeah. low it's actually crazy that's why i really liked fasani's 
when it come out when it when it came out because there was no need to bring a blood fury. It yeah, wasn't it, essential. It, I loved that. I was like, thank God, something's not just. Oh, you gotta have a blood fury, or else you're just gonna hate your life. Maybe I'm biased about the whole nightmare thing because I did so many solos that Fasani is just so much easier. It's so and, and easy. It's it's very punishing. Like you you miss a flick and you get hit like a sixty from an auto. I I was so surprised to get hit by so much, uh, just for like missing a range prayer. Like it just hits me like a fifty five. I'm like, yeah. wow, that is a lot of damage. Yep. But yeah, if you don't if you don't mess up, you don't take any damage at all. So. uh... Yeah, Fasani is like outrageously easier in my eyes. Like, it is stuff, easier. There's way less you have to worry about. Like yep. Parasite, oh yeah, you just always one hit it. Like there's no technique to not have the Parasite heal. Um, and then there's like difficult phases to the fight. Like when it summons the spores and then it does all those black holes. Yeah. Like, if you're maging, it can be hard to like be tick perfect the, still. And the harm is really, the harm makes it a lot easier because you have so much like range. You have that extra oh, yeah. of range. So it's just like, oh, you're just chilling. Yeah, it's really nice. I'm going to be sad when I run out of Wrath Runes eventually. Yeah. <laughs> and Burnt Pages. That's going to be a sad state of affairs. Okay, so um, what what do you going back to Raids 3, what do you think of the Ward of Eladinus? It is a literal, complete upgrade to Arcane. There's no downsides, which is fine. But I'm just saying there is it is an Arcane on steroids. Or not steroids, but, you know, performance I don't get enhancing. why they want to make the Mage Shield so much better. Like, uh... Like they, it's like they they have this like like they they tried to push the sirens tome on nightmares uh like pre release right like yep. they're trying to push uh, the siren tome as a new upgrade that comes from nightmare and then they benched it because they had so many other rewards but then they're re adding it in the form of you know an arcane spirit shield upgrade and it's odd to me why why the shield in particular needs to be the thing that's getting the upgrade because. Like, so they would devalue you the have a arcane. state of affairs where like the harmonized staff is currently very close to being like redundant and this new arcane is just sort of adding on to the problem where it's just like oh yeah you get a you get a max it with the uh, with all your magic weapons except for harm and uh yeah. it, it just further accentuates the problem that the harm has with its reliance on the tome of fire which should really, really get changed, by the way. The harm it should not will. be as reliant on it. It will get changed. That's my opinion. Is uh, I know Arcane's... Mod Arcane's been talking about it. Just... There needs to be something done with it. And especially now with this new wand and this new shield. It's just going to make the harm completely useless. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, it still will have a few advantages. Like, the super long distance casting is really nice and... But, oh my god, like, when you need to eat up and you have brews only, like, you're wasting so much fucking DPS just, like, yeah, brewing definitely. up. It's like, there's so many downsides to it. It has way too much baggage to it. Yeah. And uh, part of the problem is that it's it's just you cannot use it with without a tome. It's just completely dead content if you don't have a tome of fire, yep. which should really be changed. The tome of fire, I think, would be better off if it, instead of a 50% damage bonus, it was more like 10 and then you made all the standard spells like scale better with the level. So you had stuff like, you could have something like Fire Surge have a base max set of like 32 instead of 24. And then the Tome of Fire would have the 10% damage bonus on top of that to make it more uh, more fair. Because Ice Barrage is a level 94 spell, right? It, it has a base max set of 30. Fire Surge is 95, one higher than Ice Barrage, and it has a base max set of 24 Six less maxes, but it's a higher level spell. Like, is it only twenty four for real? The surge spell. It's only twenty four. Yep. Jesus it it needs to scale way higher, especially with the surge spells, because, like, like, no, it's not it, twenty four. It can't be. It is. It is. No, wait, 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 wait. Strike is eight. Bolt yep. is twelve. Yep. Okay, wait. <laughs> eight, Shit. twelve, sixteen, twenty, twenty four. Fuck. <laughs> Damn, that's so bad. Never I mean, obviously, it goes up like 40. It goes up like 40. Note, my something. proposal was to not touch the strike spells. I, actually, I, I would kind of like it if it was more like 5, 6, 7, 8. So you started with a max hit of 5 with airstrike. But, I mean, that, that like, who cares? Like, it's airstrike. Like, you, like, you get fire strike at, like, level 13. Like, who cares about that? I, I really don't care how the beginning part scales. But I think going from each tier of spell should be given more of a bonus. Like... So currently it's two, four, six, eight with the strike spells, which is unique, and then it goes nine, ten, eleven, twelve with uh, bolt. I think it is, or, or sorry, sorry, it goes strike and then bolt, right? So, 
it goes uh, 9, 10, 11, 12. And then going to the next one, it's 13, 14, 15, 16 for Blast. It should be more like 15, 16, 17, 18 for Blast. And yeah. then, like, you go up another, like, two damage when you go up to the next, yeah, uh, like, wave. And then Surge is another, there's like, so, extra... There's, like, so much bonus. more I'd want to that. I hate... If you're not going to add, like, weaknesses to monsters, you can't just make fire always best. It's just weird. That, that to it's me, dumb, is weird. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you wanted to talk about the ward of Elodinus more, and uh, all I really have to say about it is, like, yeah, it's a direct upgrade to mage, but it's not, because, like, now there's more reliance on mage offhand, uh, and you'll have to take mage offhand of stuff like uh, Nightmare now. Um, there is no alternative. Like, you have to bring it now, because it has mage damage. But that's um, fine, in my opinion, is, like, it's and that's what i also think with like uh eternal boots i feel like every slot should have some sort of benefit it's really dumb when it's like oh no just camp prims camp a defender and you know you're fine like i i guess you i guess it that would be like ideal uh i i just can't help but think of the quality of life of being able to do an eight mage a way mage switch compared to like an 11 way yeah because if but i that, but that would be like the you know Sarni, that would be so cancer oh it would be but you know that's the off like that's the the downside i guess to getting that extra dps which i think yeah, is totally fair i just like my eight way mage switch and, and you, you but know, you I'm still could but like i want to get it changed you know like you still could uh i just think what would be really cool is every single piece of armor has that little upgrade where it's like yeah you could just if you're gonna miss a tick maybe it's you know miss a tick or two trying to do like an 11 way switch maybe it's not worth it but you still have that option of like i'm gonna go ham like I'm gonna be, you know. <laughs> That's true. That's true. I suppose. Maybe, maybe, maybe it wouldn't even uh, matter that much. I don't know to 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 take like an extra switch, or maybe it wouldn't even be worth taking like a one percent damage bonus on a ring. Maybe it doesn't even give you a max hit. But yeah, yeah. like uh, like I I was hoping for a new mage amulet. Like that that was one of my pitches for race three rewards. It's just like just an upgrade of the occult. It doesn't have to be uh, that complicated. Just just twelve percent mage damage mage damage bonus instead of 10 like really you really wanted that well i okay well before i mean i guess there's more to talk about with that new amulet that's coming out that's a best in slot range and melee amulet in one and i'm surprised it didn't include mage uh so yeah i guess we're moving on to the masori equipment so yeah the amulet let's go there is, and, then, uh, and then let's talk about the light bearer ring afterwards so let's just skip yeah over. sure so the so for those that don't know the masori amulet it's it's basically like a torture and anguish in one but it only works if you're low life which is what they're defining as when you're under 40 percent of your max health so if you're 99 health you have to be 33 or sorry 39 uh, hp for this uh, low life effect to work and, and then you've got yourself something that's slightly better than a torture and an anguish in one slot um but it also has this passive effect where it will hit you for five percent of your current life uh if you're above uh if you're above low life so if you're like 40 health like like say you're 39 hp exactly and then you hp regen to 40 um the game does this every three ticks so very quickly it'll just randomly hit you for uh uh okay five percent of 40 that's uh it'll hit you for two damage so you'll so if you're just wearing the amulet not the the masori chest plate and the chain skirt then it'll hit you for five percent of your current life it'll hit you down to 38 as soon as your hp ticks up to 40. And then the amulet will start working again. It'll start giving its bonus again. Um, it's a, it's an interesting amulet because I'm thinking anywhere where you're not taking much damage or any at all, this amulet's going to be just clearly best in slot. Well, yeah, it'll be best in slot. Um, but the things it'll be best in slot for are really silly. Like, like obviously, it'll always be best in slot with Derox because Derox, you have to be 1 HP to yep. use it. Um, so... Nightmare Zone training is going to pop off. Well, I wouldn't even say pop off. What I got to stress about this amulet is that it is very, very, very slightly better yeah. than a Torture and an Anguish. And a lot of the time, it's not even going to give you a max hit or do anything. So a lot of the time, you've got this thing that's, like, damaging you um, if you're, like, yeah. high health. And it, it's what it's doing is it's essentially reducing your max health from 99 to 39 is what it's doing yeah and it's doing it for so little benefit i mean yeah, yeah it no, is that's nice true. something like derox and, and, and it even loses the prayer bonus which is kind of annoying in my yeah, opinion Yeah, no prayer bonus either like yeah. like again this is what i what i wanted to 
really get into when I talk about side grades from, from new raid content. It's like, you have a, a very slightly best in slot amulet, but it's got all this baggage. Yeah, that's and, true. And it's the baggage that makes that really hinders its uh, use and its eventual so value. What what would you say? Value. What would you say the attack and strength would have to be to make the baggage worth it? The no prayer, the thirty nine capped HP, basically. Would you say upping it by five each? Because right now it's upping it by two. I think it might be too difficult to balance to the point where it, maybe it's just a bad concept. I think this low life concept should just get scrapped. Honestly, I, I think it's too hard to balance because, like, people are saying, "Oh yeah, you can use this new Masori equipment to do like perfect infernos," but realistically, are you gonna be doing the entire inferno with just Masori and no switch? Like, are you really gonna be taking this yeah. low life ranged armor that has like? Oh, by the way, the ranged armor I haven't gotten into it yet. Maybe I should save this until later. In fact, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let, let's just talk about just the amulet for now. Okay. So, just this amulet. Like, if you're trying to take it as your like ranged amulet, like it just has so much baggage. And if it's to the to the point where it's giving you like a massive DPS increase, like maybe it just shouldn't even be added to the game at that point. Because uh, it, it's just going to sort of, it, it's going to, it, it's going to become too over-centralizing, you know? That, that, that's probably what I want to say, is that, like, the entire content that that, make, that it would be good for would be revolved around being low life at that point. Like, like uh, something like raids, it would just become a case of, like, oh, you better be, like, extremely low health all the time, <laughs> yeah. or you can't do it efficiently. Yeah, like, that, little... that, that's what it But they're be. trying to with this armor set i know where old school is coming from like they're trying to get things more challenging like they're trying it's like that high risk high reward thing which is a little obnoxious here and i totally agree with you i think it's just it's not good well, enough for the baggage but they're also just trying something new and like i don't know i guess that they're trying something new but i think they're being maybe a bit too ambitious about this because like there's there's being more challenging right and then there's just it just not being viable at all. Like, but I, this, but I don't this, know if yeah. people have tried this in Inferno yet. But it's it, to me, it seems like too much. Like, oh yeah, no, no. Like For doing Inferno, Inferno at thirty nine health all the time, it feels like not yeah, viable no. at all because you can get one shot by a ranger at any time. For Inferno, a hundred percent, I agree with you. It's just like stupid. Um, but like, there are a lot of places where this will be pretty, pretty damn good. Something where like, yeah, you can just get chanced here and there uh probably not optimal but i'm just thinking of you know think of like somewhere like bandos or something and you're going to be using the uh i don't know well maybe well, you not can't bandos. use it at bandos because all it's because currently crystal, the uh the current crystal bow kiting method yeah. is uh oh actually that's the thing is you have to use crystal armor so the masori equipment yeah. you just can't use that's true um, but but you would still use the amulet i guess and it's like there's like places like that where it's like... The, well if you use the amulet it's in its current state, you are getting two strength bonus and, like, two accuracy. Yeah, yeah, yeah two strength, two accuracy. And you're going from 99 max HP to 39. Like, yeah. that is totally uh, not worth it at all. Any Slayer task, though, where you just don't take any damage, this thing's going to be... That, that's what's funny. Oh, is yeah, like, well, it's best to slot for that. Yeah. But, but <laughs> like, who's going to be doing, like, blowpipe Slayer when they can afford shit like that? I know, like, but... Yeah, no, nah, nah, you bring up a good point. I was thinking about it. I was like, where... I was even thinking, am I even going to use this amulet at Seracnus? Because no, no, I usually will no, take no, I usually no. will take about thirty damage ish per kill just from the mage spiders. So that's like really dangerous just to be constantly using, unless I'm be, unless I'll like do perfect phoenix necklace switches where I don't. No. Yeah, I, are I you could... really gonna make your Seracnus quality of life go down the shitter? Just the cool for, thing like, is, is like I I have it? a. I have a nice little um, way to get like an extra max hit, just a a pretty big DPS increase if I use this amulet. And I'm like, yeah, like I can probably use it. I would just need to uh, use uh, like Phoenix necklaces, kind of just here and there. Like whenever I kind of drop below 19 HP, I just quickly put on a Phoenix necklace, which is really easy. But I think you'd probably give it a try at first. Like like say you like. You do raid three, and you're like, "Oh my god, I got a Masori amulet drop." You're gonna want to use it, obviously, yeah. everywhere because it's new and exciting, right? But then you're gonna see all of its drawbacks, and you're gonna yeah. notice how no, like, bad the Seracnus prayer is alone is a drawback because I really like my prayer bonus at Seracnus because I just I don't one tick flick. The fact that I'm losing that just for a little bit, like, 
a max hit like uh it's like this so there is so much baggage like it you just say. has all these problems associated <laughs> with it then in its current state it's going to be best in slot for dumb shit like giant mole like really <laughs> dumb shit yeah like maybe you'll take it to hydra but i mean like why but even <laughs> then like, you're chancing yourself every time like at least you know or well, not you chancing. Flick on the end of the phase of Hydra. Oh, you just lost like you know five minutes. Like, yeah. is, was it really worth? Bringing By the two way, you know what pisses minutes? me off? That Hydra shortcut. Why the hell is there still like a thirty-second black cutscene? <laughs> like, just get rid. of Nobody fucking cares. You're not devaluing anything by getting me in there like instantly. I hate that. <laughs> Their initial proposal for that was like a safe way to get your yeah. shit back if you <laughs> die. But in reality, it, it, even with that long delay, it's still faster than running around. It's so... So everyone uses it. So at that point, why is there a delay there in just the first place? Just get rid place? of it. It's like, okay, oh yeah, like, let, let's just randomly sit here for 20 seconds. This is, this is making the game more fair. Nobody fucking gives a shit. <laughs> It's just another case of Jagex just believing in too many de design philosophies at the same time, and then it ends up like not sticking. Like with their original Nightmare release, or, or, or rather, Nightmare is still fucked in its current state, I guess. But yeah, they 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 just have too many design philosophies that they try to tr cram in into one content, yeah. and then it just ends up being a flop. Like people hate it. So are people you scared? So are you scared yeah, that released. invocations from raids may be doing that? Or do you think that's a, gr a good... Oh, no, that, that's completely different. That, that's, that's like, a design feature uh, that flaw. will work really well. Like, like you'll use a set of invocations that are uh, that you'll be the most comfortable with. Maybe maybe if they don't do it right, it'll be really bad, because then there'll be, like, a meta... Well, there will be a meta. Set. They said that, like, 100%, there's going to be the best invocations to always do. That's what I'm... A little... But, again, like, Jagex is giving you the opportunity to choose, yeah. which is better than, they, than they've than they done in the That's past, true. where they they don't let you choose what style you want to use on which boss. They they don't give you options. But with all these different invocations, you're going to be given tons of options, and I think that level of, uh, like, creativity that you can get with your invocations is going to be very good for the new raid. Yeah. I, I think invocations are a genius idea, and it's, it's like, at, like I said, it's like adding challenge mode to the raid before... You know, like having to wait like a year for the challenge mode to actually come out. Like, I, I think it's genius. I, I think it's nothing but positive. And and if there are design problems with it or balance problems with it, then th I mean they can just change it. Like with community feedback, right? Like OSRS is still a community-driven game. So if people don't like the state that invocations are in, they'll they'll change it. And I trust that they'll do a good job by the end of the day. So okay, going back to the Masori chest plate and chain skirt now. Their defenses are unreasonably low, but I understand. By the like, way, snakeskin is better de defense. Than I do understand the them because I don't know if you've seen the concept. I don't know if you've seen the concept art. It's like literal, literal cloth you're going to be wearing. So I understand. Is it like I haven't looked at the concept art, but I'm assuming it's just going to look something like Morgan's equipment from pre EOC. It's, it's going to be like it's going to be like a BCP with cloth. It's going to be like our uh, Varak. Uh, a Verac br brasser is that what it's called with like but cloth instead of actual metal yeah <laughs> be... uh, that looks pretty cool one thing i want to say about the aesthetic no matter what happens is because there's no helm people are going to be using an armadillo helm with this and it's yeah. going to look horrendous people already bitch about how bad the armadillo helm looks especially on female models <laughs> and now you're gonna like your best in the slot for something like Ziliana is gonna be an armadillo helmet like this shitty like shiny white helmet with yeah. like just just uh some leathery shit for I, a body I guess they're just legs. adding it just because they assume you're gonna be doing slayer and stuff with it so they just didn't even want to that's bother. their design intention but keep in mind this is this is like you know end game raids content yeah. like like why does it only have to get used with the with the slayer helmet and, and that's another thing is that they're they're pretty much designing it around the fact that the Slayer Helm exists, but in encounters that you're off task, like stuff like Vorkath, like like you can't even use uh, the Masori equipment, even if it even if it worked at 99 HP and it didn't damage you, you couldn't use it at Vorkath because Elite Void is still better. Yep. Like, that's fine, you know. That's have so have Void have its little place, whatever. I have my own issues with. The fucking bonuses of a dragon hunter crossbow and stuff, you know, we'll just ignore that. But why can't you even? Why can't you not even use endgame raids range armor at something like Vorkath or or even stuff like uh, like where the crystal bow is used? I guess like like there's so many just so like 
you know, flashing design philosophies here that just makes this so bad. What I think would be cool, um, you know, if if I could just put a little bit, uh, like you know, I'm not I'm not a huge fan of Masori stuff, and now hearing it from you, I definitely am less of a fan than I even was initially. But I think what would kind of be cool is if they made these Masori stuff have prayer bonus. I know that's very negligible and it doesn't actually improve the thing that much, but like the fact that you're even taking away prayer bonus from these, it's just like, come on, it's raids three. This shit's going to be really rare. Yeah, it should, it should definitely have some prayer like, bonus. I feel like it probably. should actually be like best in slot for prayer, almost like giving it three for each piece, like three and then... If you've got a desert themed raid, I guess it would make sense for stuff to not have prayer yeah, bonus because you no. think like Zerosian equipment where That's like true. ancient staff has negative prayer. I don't I know. I wouldn't this I wouldn't is... mind that if 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 there was like some really powerful ranged armor that had negative prayer but also like popped off. Uh I would like uh I would like ranged armor that was more powerful than void. Um personally. Like like maybe like Maybe instead of making this low life stuff and maybe comparing it to Armadil, maybe you would compare it more to Void and you'd you'd give it like really bad accuracy and then really good range damage, you know? Like like yeah. uh like a spiritual successor to Void Range would be great. Or even like introduce old Void Range as an end game raids three I idea would would even be better implemented than what they currently have. Because what they currently have, uh the the skirt, by the way, is only plus two range strength at uh at low life, yeah, which is uh, not even giving you a max it very often. So what they've ended up doing is because this Masori equipment doesn't have a set bonus to it, uh, a lot of people will just not even buy the skirt. Like, like why buy the skirt if it's not giving you a max it when yeah. you could be using something like an Armadillo chain skirt? You're getting prayer, you're getting defense, you know, yeah. you're getting all these bonuses that uh, the skirt just doesn't give. So you'll have a case where the chest plate will be like very expensive and then the skirt will be worth nothing no yeah. one will will use it if it's not giving a max it so there are so many problems from a from a like we're gonna a, be looking like, silly like, armadillo oh, chain skirt with this cloth top with an armadillo helmet it's gonna look horrible like like <laughs> it, aesthetically it's gonna be horrible uh it, it just won't work at all in certain places where void is already best in slot it's like it, it's dumb to me that free free shit from a mini game is going to be better than end game raids content uh like rewards. It is like, also like, funny. Why? I'm, I'm like trying to think of like somewhere where you use range and melee, and you're not even gonna have to be doing amulet switches, which is like kind of kind it's of interesting. Interesting but there idea. There is no place in the game where you're using switches, and you're also gonna be able to be low health all the time. Yeah. So I don't think it it uh, will even be a factor for the amulet because it is cool having the torture and the and the anguish at one slot like that's pretty cool but i don't think there's anywhere in the game where you'd actually use that and like a boss you'd use it just in casual situations like every slayer task and stuff like that but like well you're not going to be using like 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 it's like you're saying that it's going to be nice to not have to switch have a switch yeah game, but, but yeah no, like you're it's going right. to reduce your switches but that will never yeah. be relevant because you're not <laughs> going to be hybriding with this amulet anywhere it's just gonna be one styling all the time because you know what you know it was a place shitties. you know it was a place i was thinking is um i was actually thinking at Seracna's because uh i tried to do a crystal but so i tried to wear crystal armor when i was at Seracna's and then i would i'd pull out the bofa for a switch when i would get stuck in the web yeah, first that's of a all really good idea it's 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 horrible it's like not it, it's not really that good of dps and it's also just like really fucking obnoxious to deal with but i was thinking if you didn't even have to do an amulet switch you literally just switch to the bow and then you know go back to your mace or whatnot like that'd be yeah, be kind of nice i guess it, it sucks because you have to bring a ranging boost like some sort of ranging pot to boost your range level yeah no it, like and it's not worth it it really it. isn't i already tried yeah it. that's, like... that's the shit thing it's just not worth it all right let's let's cover the light bearer ring this was a idea i call it the <laughs> this is my idea no. The same ring, ladies uh, and gentlemen. Yeah, so I was, I was kind of call it the the ring of specials or the ring of specs or whatever the hell. Uh, for those that are like avid listeners listeners to the Sebe cast, I have brought this up multiple times. But the thing that they didn't add, they basically added everything. So it's a it's a ring that uh, rejuvenates your special attack twice the speed. But when you take it off before it's, you know, rejuvenated, then it'll just reset when you. When you take it off and put it back on. 
So you can't be doing like B ring switches and shit. So um, the thing that they didn't add though was the cap. So I was hoping that they would have like a 120 spec cap when you're wearing the ring. Uh, that would give it like a, just a slightly better uh, effect, I guess, because you could just go into Boston. Whenever you use like the Ornit pool in your home or something and you had the ring on, you would boost up to 120 spec. Just something kind of nice. But as soon as you take it off, it'll go back down to 100. So you you have to have it equipped, which is like the downside. So what do you think of this ring, though? So you proposed uh, this ring, and I sort of like thought about it because uh, I did take your suggestion very seriously. Uh, you know, Sebe agenda is very strong, so maybe, you know, this ring would actually get added to the game at some point. And it looks like they're pitching it. So... The the first thing I'm gonna say is that I, I see it as a you know a, like how would I use this functionality sort of thing like that, that's the first thing I think about is like would I want to take a ring switch to places like is it really gonna be worth it? Um, so the very first thing I can think of with this new ring is it's gonna pop off at DKs because it's like three styles like you know having double the SGS specs is pretty crazy because you don't really need dps on supreme anyway yeah so it's gonna make dk's even comfier if it comes out in the game but uh, as like an actual ring switch i don't think you'd really want to like switch rings all the time unless you want to min max and like really like push for min maxing where you'd be wearing it while you're killing like god wars minions and stuff so um, here here's an interesting thing i'm thinking of bosses any boss where there's a 30 second wait timer so like every time you kill the boss, you equip the ring, and then as soon as you start killing it again, you unequip it, and then it'll be thirty seconds, perfect increment to gain an additional ten spec. It's like a death charge, basically. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty much. Pretty you just cool. have to remember it. Um, so again, I I think of all the baggage associated with it, where like, oh, if you take the ring off, like it resets your thing, like yep. like your spec recharge, like like I think of all the baggage, and and I think if they want like really exciting end game like raids three rewards, like. Like, I want them to introduce, like, things that are going to, you know, spark lots of discussion. Like, like imagine if they added, like, some sort of, like, Infinity Gauntlet kind of thing. Like, a new glove slot where you can add every single ring in the game to. To, like, get the benefits of every single ring in the game. Like, like something like that, like, sounds crazy exciting. Holy like, fuck. Oh, my God, you can <laughs> like, wear every single like, ring in the game. Like, yeah. holy shit, dude. New Twisted Bow from Raids is going to be a thing where you can wear every single ring in the game. Like, that sounds really exciting to use. Like... Like, holy fuck, collecting all the infinity stones and, like, <laughs> <laughs> getting your character super decked out on rings. Like, something like that sounds, like, so, really. Okay, like, so, I, I want to hear this, then. What if, like, what if the light bearer ring was actually a light bearer essence? So, you get this drop and you can use it on any ring you want. And then it equip, and then it just has, like, the little, uh, in parentheses, E you know, parentheses sign. So it just shows like, this is like an enhanced ring that has the light bearer effect. Like, would you be more of a fan of that? So something where it's like just a straight up upgrade to whatever ring like you would like to use. Obviously it would make, uh, I ring. do like it, but double spec energy, it would be too strong. If you could just combine it with like a B ring, maybe, maybe nerf the effect a little bit. So it's 50% more spec increase over time. Uh, you don't think you, I mean, it's raids three. Like you're saying, I feel like you're, uh, you know, you want something super powerful, but then as soon as it's super powerful, you're like maybe maybe double the special attacks at places like and in, and having your ring slot. Maybe maybe yeah, maybe like you could just be fine with that even because uh, yeah, by itself like losing out on on the berserk ring. Yeah, and by the way, berserk ring came from like 2004 content, <laughs> and why is it still nobody best slot nobody <laughs> knew that strength, but nobody knew back then that strength was so much better than like accuracy. I used to think, ooh, accuracy, like I want to hit less. Zero. Well, like this is gonna be huge, but you know. You to don't... be fair, like back then it was only plus four, and since they've come out with a, an imbue to That's make true. it double the bonuses, right? But, but yeah, like I thought, I thought it would be really exciting to have all the rings in one, just a super crazy strong ring that <laughs> does everything. That'd like be OP. enough with these trade offs. Just give us this super sick ring that's gonna cost like five hundred mil. That's gonna be super rare, but you can com combine all your like, like. You probably don't even have every ring in mind when when I say all the rings like Ring of Endurance, Ring of the Gods, Ring yeah, of Suffering, that's Tyrannical Ring, Treasonous Ring, all the rings. 
even something like Celestial Ring, like just have everything in one ring. And and I think like something like that would be like, wow, dude, I want this new ring, like stuff that's going to make people excited for the new content. Because right now they just have like, oh, yeah, like new best in slot mage weapon. And then there's not really much else to say. Yeah, I mean, um, that ring idea is inc- incredibly OP, just going to say, because like just in. <laughs> literally you just, wouldn't like, add all the bonuses of every ring to get you probably like cut it in half or something um like <laughs> yeah. adding all the bonuses that thing would be then, expensive then, like, as fuck that would be half. like depending on how rare it would be that would be like five bill item just, <laughs> jesus christ yeah, like it, you want end but yeah no i do i do exciting. understand like the thirst for just a fucking tebow like something that's on that level of you know craziness um the only way they've implemented like super crazy strong upgrades is if they they're like sort of being all sly about it like the the tebow like like people people that know how to use dps calculators knew like before the tebow was released how powerful it would be but but i think the general population of the game didn't realize the tebow would be as powerful as it is when it was released um so it was sort of being really released into the game and then people are like using it in their going holy shit wow this is like hitting 85s on bandos dude like wow this is actually kind of absurd and and uh and that's how jax feels like they can implement stuff like that into the game by being all sly about it but by like having like all these like difficult to understand damage formulas uh same thing with the scythe like it was seven tick and people were saying it was going to be dead content and release and then they like stealth buffed it to five tick and then suddenly it was really good DPS, but people didn't really understand how powerful it was, so they they got voted in. And I think, uh, other than using this tactic, Jagex doesn't think that they're going to be able to add really powerful rewards because they just they just feel like stuff's going to get voted no to. Yeah. Which is uh like they should probably stop considering that way because nowadays people vote yes to like literally everything that isn't PvP related, like. Like, Jagex should be a bit more uh, daring when they add new content, I think. They should be less scared to introduce powerful stuff to endgame raids. Because at the end of the day, like, you, like how long is this game really going to last? Are you really that worried about power creep that you, you know, uh, <laughs> that you think your game is going to die, like, overnight? Like, okay. like the game is going to die if they, don't, if they don't add power creep. You know, I, that's the thing. I want to hear, so have this in mind, but before we do it, so... I want to hear what you would want from Raids 3, if you could have, like, the, the Tebow equivalent. But before we cover that, um, of, like, what something that you would really want, I'm assuming you have something in mind. I, I want do to, have things in mind. I, I want to cover the Osmumtens Kopesh, Kopesh and the Karis Partisan. So I've been talking a lot of shit about Raids 3 rewards for the past, like, 30 minutes. <laughs> and I feel like it's kind of sad because, like... On my first cast, when I was talking about like things that I would like be speculating on could be out of the game, like I was talking with tons of enthusiasm, and I think people love listening to me when I'm talking with like you know great passion and enthusiasm. So I, I feel like kind of guilty in a sense that I've been talking so much shit and negativity about raids three rewards for the past thirty minutes. But the Kopesh is actually really cool. It, it's actually a really good addition. Like, so it's it's not outrageously strong anywhere. Um, but it's not weak either. It's got, like, some really cool things attached to it. Like, it has uh, this minimum hit effect where if you roll successfully, it'll have a minimum hit where it can only... It, can, it can't hit less than, like, an 8, right? Or, yeah. like, a 9 if you max at 60. Uh, and it's five. It's a 5-tick, really powerful melee weapon with really good accuracy, by the way. Not, not too much accuracy, but just enough accuracy to make it really good on things with high defense. It, it's really cool. It's not a best in slot weapon or anything, but it's gonna see a lot of use. It, it, it's basically the rapier of uh of raids three, because rapier isn't explicitly best in slot anywhere except for like dumb shit like like uh, Vasa crystals, like like really really niche scenarios. But you see the rapier getting used all the time. Wait, because... is oh wait, sorry, is this a one hand or a two handed weapon? I'm not seeing. So it. I I wasn't sure at first when I was researching this thing, but it is one handed. Okay. So you can use an avernic with it. Um, what I what I wanted uh was like a a long sword to come from raids three. Um, I'll get more into what I wanted from raids like my initial raids three reward yeah. pitches. But uh, this Kopesh is it, it's pretty cool. Um, I think it will see a lot of use and it's gonna be uh, it, it's it's not dead content on release like the Masori equipment is. It, it's just like you know like a tertiary 
item like the rapier was like like it's not gonna be best in slot anywhere but people are gonna use it a lot okay like, you... it's gonna get a lot of use because of just how unique it is people are gonna use it at stuff like uh like uh i don't know like stuff with low health it's gonna be interesting using it because it's got this minimum hit applied to it right so you're not gonna noodle very often on things with low health you'll one hit things super super consistently like think nylicus like melee roll nylicus like yeah you can use an event rpg and it's three tick but you could use this five tick weapon and it's guaranteed to one hit the little nylos like yeah that sounds pretty awesome to me like like it's got all these little things attached to it that that's gonna add variety to the meta okay i, I think it's gonna get a lot of usage you know what i want from this i know this might be asking too much but i really wish it could act like a halberd where it has an additional attack range one tile extra that's attack really range. cool because we that's don't have really enough of that and i think this would be i mean and i'm also you know I use a Sea Halley at uh, Seracnus, and it's, like, really good to use there. It's got, oh, like... imagine your Kopesh, dude, yes. as a last hitting thing. Yes. I guess it's the stab weapon, but but then again... No, but it also slash has slash, yeah. Just for the range. Dude, um, I wish they would do that. <laughs> uh, I, I want it to work on Corp, by the way. I, I think it would be cool if it worked on Corp. Just add, like, another, like, weapon you could possibly use on what? Corp. And it wouldn't be that OP either. It is 5 tick. And it hits over 50, and Corp has this, like, damage cap on it where you can hit over 50. So I don't even know if it would be better than the Spear, but I think it would just be cool to just, like, let it work on Corp, I guess. I don't know. Just Wait, there's a damage cap? No, there's not. Um, There is a damage cap on Corp. I think it's it just for C. apply to Ruby Specs. Oh, um, it's really? So there is a damage cap, but Ruby Specs is the... Uh, it's the outlier, yeah. You can hit 100 with a Ruby Spec. It's weird how the damage uh, oh, cap fuck. applies. I think it just doesn't apply with range at all. Um, but yeah, like you cannot hit over a 50. Why does so, it do uh, that? Why do they do shit like that? What's the so point? So you know how magic uh, actually does 100% damage to yeah. corp as well? Uh, if you do volatile specs, you can see that, yeah, you're only hitting up to 50. Interesting. Um, and then the Sea Halley obviously only hits 50-50. Uh, because it does, it does actually work on corp. It does do a full yeah. damage if so, you have it So why? Corp. Why is that? Um... I think th so. Zora has a similar damage cap. I hate I think that, it's just by the way. But I think the design philosophy that they had at the time, where they're like scared that with power creep, the bosses are gonna get like rolled over. So they're adding yeah. damage caps ahead of time, so that when new upgrades come out, the the bosses aren't getting like three hit. You know. Okay. That, that that's just a design philosophy that they had at the time, which I don't necessarily agree with. But I yeah, need, I guess they just did that. I need to have this answered. I. I see this, and it doesn't make full sense to me. Maybe it's just, you know, maybe me. Okay, listen, I'll just explain it to you before I start getting into all about me. But Zora has a cap of 50. Is there some other weird little modifier yes. thing that's making it so yes. it does like a 47 to a 48 to a 49 to a 50? Yeah, you got that right. What so is that? So if you hit over 50... What happens is your damage gets re-rolled to be between 45 and 50. So Ooh, at Corp, okay. Corp, the damage cap is just a raw damage cap where yeah. if you hit over 50, it just gets truncated to 50. But at Zora, it's implemented differently where it will hit 45 to 50 instead. So if you have more max hits over 50, like it's still going to increase your DPS because you're going to be more likely to hit in between the 45 to 50 range. But... Yeah, it is uh, very strange how they implemented it at Zora. Yeah. So if you it, hit a Ruby spec, it will hit, like, in between 45 and 50. It almost makes me feel like they want to, like, <laughs> they want to do that just so it doesn't look like you're capping so much. But it's, like, yeah, it's, yeah, it's that's pretty exactly clear we're fucking capping. And you know what? It, it, it almost just reminds me of beginner clues. Fuck beginner clues, by the way. I got 600 a few months ago. I'm done with those forever. But, like, that, that <laughs> I'm stupid. I'm, like, two beginners done. The I'm stupid like, yeah, one no. through three step beginner clue but they make the one step only 10 percent of the time it's so stupid like, why? dude why? stop doing it like just stop like just make things how they're supposed to be they stop pretending like they, it almost like it came in hidden like ooh, you know it's only one to three we're not going to tell you like you know it's 45 percent chance to be a three step but it's so stupid like so there's annoying. no I hate linearity like, like they have to add like dumb shit on top like, i hate that. why that's how They're I feel beginner about clues, dude. They're meant to be quick and easy. <laughs> I know. Oh my god. I'm just glad I'm done with them forever. I'll never. Those uh, are not clue scrolls, by the way. I don't even qualify those as clue scrolls. Not even clues. Not Save even, a doesn't even care. They're not even clues. They're so bad. 
Okay, wait, wait, listen to this. Speaking on speaking on clues before we go back to Rage 3 real quick for the Karis Partisan. I was thinking, what if they came... Okay, so you know how medium clues are known for their boots? Like, they're just yep. the boot tier? I was thinking... Okay, first of all, I have a picture. I'll show you later. I don't have it on me right now. But there's a picture of, like, uh, like a Reddit post of some guy that came out with third-age boots and a third-age crossbow and a third-age dehyde shield. It looks sick. But I was thinking, what if they came out with third age boots and they're just as rare as any other third age piece like any other like specific third age piece um but but they leaked into the medium casket so medium uh, mediums uh, me, they're no they're no like the, before you have a aneurysm so mediums like they would only their their only third age drop would be those boots but you could also get those boots from every other harder tier so hard elites and masters but you would at least get that one in like 50k shot of getting these third age boots. I think it would be dope. And I okay, I, okay, and like I, that's reasonable. I, yeah, and again, it's a specific third age. It's fucking rare. It's not like a one in 200 or anything. It's like third age. It's actual third age. But you can get those boots from mediums as well as every other higher tier. Just as long as they don't fuck up the drop rates like they did with <laughs> Gilded, where they have like the fucking Gilded Sim that's like. <laughs> Way more common than any other gilded piece because it takes up its own individual slot on a mega rare table. Like, I gotta, as long as they don't fuck it up, yeah. then sure. Yeah. No, I, I was thinking that'd be really cool just to have like third age boots and you get that little taste of it on uh, mediums. Obviously, you would probably never get it because you'd have to do on average like 50,000 mediums to see one. But like, I like that. I like that idea a lot. As long as people actually like the idea of third yeah. age boots to begin with i think that's they cool. look sick and, and, and they don't have cool, and they yeah. don't have stupid fucking wings on them you know like every other boot <laughs> <laughs> i like the wings personally i mean they're but, cool uh, and all but like sometimes just like damn but no these boots look cool without wings so uh i bet you were uh, a fighting boots kid instead of a uh, you know the stronghold of security nah, i was i was, a, I was a, a rainbow wait what are they called uh, fancy, fancy boots, boots i yeah, think fancy. you were a fancy boots i was Chad. a fancy right, boots cool. How can you hate wings and be a fancy boots, Chad, man? Like, come uh, on. I think I'm just getting tired of wings because every boot has them. <laughs> okay, true, true. Fair like, enough. Even devout boots, man. Like, those things look silly. I'm not a big fan of devout, like, how they look. They're a little... They're like disco boots. They're, I don't know. They're... They, they, well, they, they give off that ceridoman effect. I think they're pretty cool looking. I'm looking at them right I, now. I think they're... it's fine. But, yeah, that's, that's just, like, personal, like conjecture i guess yeah or whatever word i'm supposed to use i, I don't even know if that word was appropriate there but yeah. uh yeah it, it's just like like i don't know whatever anyway Pers that's personal place like that, that would jokes for different folks i guess that would be like a little a mini clue scroll expansion without fucking up every rate by the way poll 76 is coming out soon hopefully you know, oh please dude please Modelena, i don't want oh, to get more elite caskets back dude modelena has assured me that very 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 like like she she didn't want to like say a, an absolute certainty is going to be on it but she said like yes it'll be on it you know but she doesn't want to be blamed for if somehow it doesn't get on it but it'll be on it so poll 76 Stay agenda is finally going to pay off fellas the elite clues are going to get fixed all right, let's and talk. if you've been holding on to caskets, then because uh, because your good friend Sebe told you to, then you're going to get rewarded for it soon. Hopefully. Did you know I opened some? Some some guy donated. Yeah, you can't. <laughs> I saw it in your stream. I was like, dude, what the fuck? <laughs> diamond hands, dude. What happened to diamond hands? I didn't want to open them, but you know, like when you get rent paid in like a, a second, you kind of just <laughs> you, you know how it. Uh, anyway, let's talk about the Karis Partisan. Um, this is a here you know what i want i want you to go into it i like it when you explain this shit so what sure. is this Karis partisan is meant to be a one-handed spear version of Karis. um so you're gonna have like stab slash and crush bonuses on it so you can use like whatever style you want to use unlike Karis, uh it can use crush which cal fights are weak to so already it's like oh you can finally use Karis on crush on like cal fights like that that makes a lot of sense like you know it, it's meant to be super effective to like beetle scarab type creatures and now you're finally going to be able to use the combat style that they're weak to as well so it's got that going for it um the first thing i want to mention is how karis works it's very funny so it has a it has a 33 percent damage bonus 
to uh, cow fights and scarabs and all those beetle-like creatures. Um, but it has a 1 in 51 chance to crit, which is unlike anything else in the game. I think the only other thing that has this crit effect is like some weird shit like Gatterhammer on Shades. Like, <laughs> like uh, so Karis has this 1 in 51 chance to crit, and it does triple, triple damage. And and that's almost unheard of. And now that you've got this Karis Partisan, that's adding even more strength. It's like four max hits before this triple damage is applied. So if you use it at something like Calphite Queen, it's going to be very funny because you're going to be hitting over 130 with strength, uh, with like max strength gear uh, if you crit and you hit like a high roll. So it's really, really funny how how it uh, scales with strength bonus. Because you thought stuff like Arclight was insane with its 70% uh, multiplier. <laughs> Imagine triple damage with uh, you know all that strength bonus gear that you're able to apply onto it. It's so funny. I love you how could, You could randomly pop off and two-hit the first phase of KQ, or, or even both phases. You can just, like, four-hit them if you're really fortunate. Like, imagine that. Imagine how funny of a clip that would be, just four-hitting KQ. I, I really love that it's all in one hit spot, too. It's not like it does three yeah, hit spots. one bad Boom. hit spot. Just, like, and imagine the down. XP drops. Like, you thought Crystal Halberd was popping off, <laughs> yeah. dude. Imagine just getting, like, a 600 XP drop out so, of nowhere. Like, I wonder... Whoa. I wonder if there's going to be things in, I mean, 100% there's going to be. Like, in Raids 3, there's going to be these beetles and shit. Oh, yeah, and I like that a lot. That's where the Karis Partisan is going to really shine. Wow, so uh, so this thing is going to... It, 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 I think it's I think it's even more than a 1 in 51, right? Like, they're making it even more common than a 1 in 51. I don't know about that. I, th I thought Let's they see. just copied the Keras code. That's th that's what I uh, added maybe, to my GPS calculator. I, is I just copied what Keras does, and I just added like Keras Partisan as like an alternative to Keras. So may maybe it is more common. That would be funny. But but again, yeah, like it is rare to crit, obviously. And the chances of you two-hitting KQ is like extraordinarily low. Like you're probably not going to see that happen. But it'll be very funny to see those really high hits. But yeah, most of the time, like, this thing is just going to be, like, pretty reasonable DPS on stuff like KQ. Actually, maybe it's kind of sad, because, like, it's another another case where... It's like Arclight, right, on Demons, where it's, like, out DPSing almost everything of its class, uh, and it's a free item. Yeah. Uh, this, this, this isn't a Raid's reward, for those of you wondering. This is coming from the Beneath Curse Sands quest as a free item. Wait, What? Oh, maybe I misread so, that. So it's it's not a Raids 3 reward, but I think there is something coming from Raids 3, like these jewels that you can attach to the Partisan to, to upgrade it. Um, yeah. I'm okay. not exactly sure their their uh, intention here, but yeah, the, I know that the Partisan is coming from the quest itself, and it's going to be a free item. And it's going to be kind of sad having stuff like the Abyssal Bludgeon getting outclassed by a quest item. A master level quest item, no less. Are so you, you do sure? contact. Wait, are you sure this is coming from... I don't yeah, even yeah. see where I don't have the that. poll blog up, but but uh, if if you oh, actually let me let me oh 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 you are right you are right saying. upon helping you okay okay yeah yeah I see it now I, in the in the redacted redacted yeah. I wasn't reading the uh, with X on X. yeah the italics I was just reading the normal stuff okay so it will be from there but the jewels will be from raids three uh let's see uh jewel the buffs. eye of the corruptor and the jewel of the sun. Oh, they're not actually sure. They could be unlocked as a random job or given them upon a certain number of raid completions or as a reward for killing bosses using specific methods. Okay. So they're not sure how they're going to implement okay. the jewels, but it's going to buff the partisan even more. And if they, like, really buff it, maybe it will be, like, kind of sad. But then again, it's just Calphite Queen that it's relevant, yeah. right? It's only one boss. And then the raids three stuff. So I don't mind this thing being really powerful against, like, the the things inside raids three if it means like you know kq is also going to get like busted because of it yeah i think it'll only be a problem if the if this partisan is out dpsing a like a blowpipe on on the second phase of kq that's a problem well here's here's my issue i'll just say my take is anything that's best in slot against a certain thing i always feel like they should be charged Arc light's fine. Be or arc light's a little. Oh, bit I OP, like that a lot. That's a good I idea. I really wish things would be charged. A dragon hunter lance should have been charged. It should not just be a free, permanent, non-degradable weapon. And this thing should be charged with like fucking pyramid plunder pieces. Those little or just something, you know, like 
Yeah, something. That, it, that's a cool idea. Anything that's, like, going to be best in slot against something, and it's going to outclass Scythe, outclass all this other fucking shit. Like, it really should be a charge thing, especially when it's a free weapon. Um, Arc Light's fine because it has ancient shards and they're untradeable. Dragon Hunter Lance should have been, like, I don't know, something from Vorkath should have been a shout out that helps to or not Vorkath. That, like that's Hydra. something I haven't really thought about at all, because you've got these vials of blood coming from Tob, right? Like, yeah. why can't they do, like, a parallel design philosophy with that, where they're adding, like, uh, something something that has, like, multiple uses that is for raids rewards, like, uh, I don't know, like, like let's say, like, Menophyte tokens, like, some sort of, like, Menophos currency, where you can pay a guy to, to charge your Karis yeah. Partisan to make it better right like and then you can use this currency for other features like inside metafoss maybe because it i mean i'm gonna be honest like it's a little sad that you know it's not really like sad it's like whatever but it goes too far sometimes so what i'm th what i'm trying to say is i got a mace it would have been really great at kq scythe was already better but it costs a lot and then i got this mace at kq it was like boom it's like wow i grind it and i actually get a few uses you know i don't even get to use my mace at serb anymore because arc light's better but kq <laughs> is one of those one places where it's like I, I could still use my mace and it's you know really good but now <laughs> just free fucking weapon that everyone has where it's like damn it's not even like charged or anything just fucking free and it's best in slot like it is really it. sad that you can't use like your fancy new gear at, st at places. Th that's the thing is that Jagex should uh, try to keep in mind that things should be useful at many places so that people are like, you know, like the people that get the the drops are going to be using them and they're going to feel like they're getting properly yeah. rewarded for, for you know, getting the drop. So if if you've got stuff that's like only good for like one thing, it's like so, kind of lame. Oh, here's the other thing I just noticed. This partisan has a prayer bonus. Which is weird because we were kind of talking about the theme of the desert not having like prayer stuff, but they just ran. Uh, it. I don't know if that's uh, a parallel to what Karis was. Let, let me just quickly see if Karis has the same prayer bonus. Ooh yeah, look at yeah, that. Yeah, Karis has two prayer. Okay. Like like the this this one-handed spear has a has a mage accuracy bonus too, which was just copied from Karis, which it shouldn't be by the way. Daggers have a a special thing in the game where they give like one mage bonus for some reason it's like a quirk that uh runescapes had and it's pretty consistent with most weapons in the game okay that's cool. but they copied they basically copied karis and then made it a, a hasta so so this uh mage bonus shouldn't actually exist because it doesn't make any sense on a spear it doesn't make sense on a dagger because of that quirk but uh yeah they're just copying uh like most of the things that karis had which and it had prayer for some reason i don't know why but they're just copying that uh that little quirk that Karis had, so... I I want to... We'll we'll continue on with some Raids 3 discussion, but I want to quickly... Um, or not maybe not quickly, but just talk about combat achievements. On release, what are your thoughts on combat achievements now that they're out? Okay, I want to make sure that we covered everything from Raids 3 first, because okay, I don't should actually we just do remember that? I want to go back to it, but, like, yeah, let's go for it then. Let's so, stick to I think 3. we actually went through all the rewards, didn't we? I, I didn't really talk about the armor too much it's just bad <laughs> it's just really bad and not worth it for for most things oh i just i just realized off task giant well it's not even best saw it because you just use void oh no 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 it would be best slot because the accuracy yeah so um i guess we did cover all the raids three rewards uh um so yeah i guess yeah i guess i would be ready to move on to combat achievements yeah you're right i mean and so. the thing is like we can we can talk about what we would want to see from raids three like the actual bosses and stuff just speculation because they don't really they haven't talked about it much i know they're gonna add be adding things like the sepulcher sort I'm of really looking forward to hallways. that kind of uh oh yeah design like sepulcher is so awesome it's so much fun man it's so good dude sepulcher i love sepulcher so, so much dude <laughs> i got 99 agility on my alt and i'm i got so sad after i'm like oh my god i'm finally done i like I, I can't come here anymore. It's so sad. It's really. I, fun. I, I got the squirrel even from Sepulcher on my alt, so it's like. Damn. I guess I don't have a giant squirrel on on my iron. I guess I could do Sepulcher. I'm waiting for, for elite then... clues to come out first. <laughs> from the, oh from please, the dude! You know, oh elites from Sepulcher would be so sick. Or even if it was a like relatively good elites, like you probably still do it because you've got that 200 mil mentality. Yeah. Sort of. You know, in the back I of would your mind. Straight up, oh I. I love Sepulchre so much. 
so I'm looking addictive. forward to them uh, taking some of the sepulchre mechanics and adding them to Raid 3. I think yep. that's going to be really exciting. You know, this desert-themed raid with, like, you know... Uh, it's going to have, like... Uh... Oh, dude, this, Did you ever play so Crash Bandicoot can... 3? Like, the pyramid? Uh, uh, you talked about this in a cast. I finally remember the, the boulder... The, the boulder that chases you like Indiana Jones <laughs> That was style. the dinosaur one. That's the dinosaur one. But there was these pyramid ones as well where it's like you have these walls that literally squish you if you like go into them. Like so you're like jumping across these little things. And <laughs> there's like these walls that will just like open and close and you get fucking squished. And then there's like these darts that shoot out. God. So I only played a little bit of Cla Crash Bandicoot, but I do fondly remember like desert sections of some games like Donkey Kong 64, baby. <laughs> where you've got these pyramids with like all these different it's got like snake monsters and stuff yeah like like Dude. honestly like there's so much you can do with uh with the egyptian theme that's just completely untapped potential yep. i really hope they take a little bit from crash bandicoot warp because they had these they also had these little monkeys that would hide in these like barrels and they would chuck rocks at you basically as <laughs> it's really <laughs> weird but then when you approach them they would hide in their little Dude, oh god, I want to play Crash. Like a little thing with a monkey speak amulet where you can like convince them to throw oh, rocks shit. at the enemy instead. Like, oh, you could really go hard on that. <laughs> dude, there's so much potential. All the Easter eggs, oh dude. I hope there's like magic carpets in it. Uh, well, this is tomb themed, right? So, what I was what I was thinking about a desert theme, because right? every everyone in their nan knew that the next raid was gonna be in the desert, right? So yeah. I was like thinking like. What could you really do with a desert themed raid? And I was a little scared because maybe it's a little bit too inhibitive because there's only so many like bosses you could add that are like desert themed. The the Theater of Blood had like you know a, a very large variety of monsters because they went with that theme of like oh Verzik set up this theater with all different kinds of creatures that you're meant to fight. But this desert themed like tomb kind of thing maybe is a little bit inhibitive in the sense that there's only so much like Egyptian themed shit that you can add like you know the whole mummy scarabs uh snakes kind of thing like like what else can you really do other than that you know like dude like I was... maybe it could be inhibitive but you could you could maybe like try to be cheeky and add like some some greek mythology creatures like i don't know like manticores uh i mean you could just look at like the entire Yu-Gi-Oh card game for ideas <laughs> if you wanted to cuz because that has an inherent like Egyptian theme. Maybe you could like steal some concepts from that. But dude, I was yeah, thinking. Like... Okay, so so you know how um I'm thinking of Aladdin right now, where you go into that little. Oh, oh yeah, hell yeah. Yeah, I'm thinking of Aladdin, and uh, I think what would be really sick is to. Uh, I think what would be really cool. <laughs> I'm just fucking thinking. So this might not actually work out that well, but. What would be really cool is if it was hallways, kind of like Sepulchre, where you're getting through these places. But there's also these little distractions where it's like you see an urn or something, and it could have something really valuable. You'd waste time like going for that urn, but it's like, shit, I kind of want to, I kind of want to go fucking loot that urn. I could get like, like an increases elite your loot chance or something. Like yeah, little or distractions like, or like, like that. Just, I like that. I like you just that. randomly get like some rare drop potentially, or you just get a little bit of gold here and there. It's like little urns and shit where you can like kind of like make these little detours and then uh I, I honestly dude i think i think a magic carpet <laughs> would be fucking dope if you could Aladdin, be... like the first thing i thought of was like a, a fucking genie boss like a super evil genie with like magic powers he's like oh. throwing like balls at you and shit he's like warping <laughs> reality so around dope. you with his like magic genie powers like just think of that dude that would be so imagine cool. you could get a genie, genie pet you get a lamp that has a genie pet. Genie follows pet. You, That's, I love that. Yeah. Oh my god. You've got this old school thing going on too because genie is such an iconic thing yeah. in this game because it's it's the quintessential random event, right? Yep. So, oh my god, a genie pet would be so sick. Genie pet. Fuck, oh, I love dude. that. Dude. Evil you get freaking one wish, genie, you get, dude. No, no, you get three wishes from the genie too. So you get the... <laughs> You get, <laughs> I don't even know what you'd get. Shit. You just like imagine you have the pet out and you get the genie random. It just gets replaced with your genie pets. Like, oh yeah, by the way, I've got this lamp ready for you. Like instead of getting the genie, it just gives you a freaking lamp. God damn. Yeah, you can use the three wishes, but as soon as you use the th or no, you can you can use your third wish on freeing your genie, so you just lose your pet. Oh no. Dude, okay, I like this is what I was gonna say is I thought like an Egyptian theme would be really inhibitive, but you could get so creative with this, I feel like. 
like thinking to stuff like Aladdin and Yu Gi Oh and and uh, like uh, Are there? Tomb Raider, Indiana Jones. Like you Okay, could really so go hard on this. I think. So I know there's um. Okay, so I don't know if this is necessarily desert theme. Okay, I know there's ants in the game, but there's no elephants, correct? In the game. No. So what if they came out with those Oli fonts from like Lord of the Rings, giant ass elephants <laughs> that you can fucking like. Oh, dude, I'm. Just... I don't think that's really well, desert theme exactly, well... but. It... What, well, when when I was initially speculating what uh, Raid 3 would look like, I was thinking about how, like, it would kind of suck if the entire raid was, like, indoors, like, tomb area. What if there was a section of the raid where you're outdoors in, like, some sort of, like, like crazy, like, sandstorm desert kind of thing where you're, like, traversing the desert and you've got the, you're fighting, like, outdoor things or things that make sense that they would be outdoors, like, flying creatures or, like, vultures or some something, like, uh, yeah. Like if there was like a section of the raid where you're not actually in the tombs yet, like, like think of think of how uh, you know there's this giant black area at the bottom of the desert right now, right? Like, what if you just replace that with like deep Caridian, where it's like untraversable, nearly desert region that leads to the tomb that you're actually meant to go into? Like maybe there would be like a raid lobby just outside of deep Caridian. And uh, this would be south of Menafos, by the yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. So you'd have this lobby area where it's like the an oasis where like it's like a like a safe spot in an otherwise really treacherous desert. And then you your party would like you'd make your party, and then you'd start your journey by going south into this deep Caribbean, and then it would be this randomly generated desert that you'd have to traverse through. You'd have to use like. Like uh, I don't know if you've played Ocarina of Time. Like I'm thinking something like like haunted wasteland kind of thing, where in, in Ocarina of Time you would uh you would have to like traverse this sandstorm kind of deserty thing uh, by uh, following these flags that you can barely see, and then at the the second half of the section you would use a lens of truth to see this invisible ghost that would traverse you through the rest of the desert. And then that's how you cross the haunted wasteland in, in that in that game. I'm, I, that's what I'm thinking about the beginning section of uh, maybe like a desert themed raid where you traverse this this sandstormless this uninhabitable desert that's like full of monsters that you have to fight along the way, and then you make your entrance to the raid. And then what you see after you traverse this desert is this massive like just spectacular tomb that on the outside looks like like it, it's been like sort of like worn down by the by the elements but you go inside and it's this regal like sort of extremely royal looking thing like 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 you could really go all out on the uh on the aesthetics here like yeah. really make it look uh gaudy and 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 like feels like you're in this uh brand new sort of area of the game that you went through this rough desert to get through like, like that's what I was thinking is there would be an outdoor section to the raid and then an indoor section, and then that way you'd have more freedom, more liberty to design uh, encounters that way. Whereas you're not stuffing everything into this tomb. Yeah, that, that was there's my so, idea. There's so much fucking potential. If it's just like you, you just like the lobby is inside like the the beginning part of the tomb itself, and then you just go in. Like I it's feel like that dull. would be lame. Yeah. But having a lobby outside of deep Caridian and then you have to traverse the desert to get to the actual raid part, um, I thought I thought that would be really cool. Like imagine like release day, tombs of a mascot, you go into the desert. Just imagine how you're feeling like like you uh, are like in a brand new like sort of you're in brand new content. You're traversing this this desert that's like rough. You like you don't know what you're doing. You're just getting like wrecked by like I don't know worms that are coming out of the ground. Yeah, like, like tremors tremors like earthquake that like the yeah. screen's shaking like there's this like sandstorm effect you can't see where you're going it's like like you could sort of capture that sort of feeling uh with this outdoor section and then and then imagine like release day you get to the tomb it's just like this massive building and it really is like looks so foreboding to enter and you know like you're gonna get into this super hard end game content it's like y you really feel it on release day i know like once you start like grinding the raid you don't really feel that anymore but i think first impressions are very very important when designing new content and if people get that impression of like wow i'm entering this fucking like basically the inferno uh like yeah. I, I think that'll be really exciting on launch and that'll make the content really hype there's yeah no it's exciting um 
The other thing that they're coming out with, I'm not exactly sure when combat achievement, uh, like new tasks are going to be released when like Raids 3 comes out. Probably a couple months down the line, I'd assume. Like, Who knows? It took it didn't out. take Fasani very long to get at it, but then again, it was already in the game when combat achievements were out. So yeah, it'll probably yeah. be a few months before they apply combat achievements to Raids 3, I think. Let's go into it. What are your thoughts on combat achievements? What did they... What... Or, okay. There's so much to talk about. I know I think they did pretty well. But yeah. experiences let's with let's it. hear about it. Um, so, on release of combat achievements, I was really excited to, to start playing the game again because, like, I, I haven't really been playing a whole lot. Like, I've been playing, like, once every, like, few days. Like, that's how seldom I've been playing. Um, only for a few hours each day as well. And when combat achievements came out, I was, like, really playing, like, a lot. Like, I thought it was really fun, like, routing all the tasks. Like, like oh, there's, like, such and such challenge for such boss like like it was fun routing a whole bunch of challenges all at the same time like <laughs> i remember like day two or three i was like doing regular gauntlet for the for like the the no armor task and like the no potion task i would just try to cram as many challenges <laughs> in at once and i yeah. would get like five things done at once and it felt so good like and a lot of the challenges were really difficult. Like they felt like a, it felt like you were accomplishing something when yep. you were doing them. So I, I had a lot of fun on combat achievement release, just full clearing bosses, just like going like boom, 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 boom. Okay. What were uh, what were know, some we of your favorite tasks left. so far? So I'll start. I'll start with the negative stuff first. So okay. I'll, I'll talk about how shitty killing fifty deranged archaeologists was first. Like, I'm so glad that. I did. I had all those KCs done. The only KCs I didn't have done were the CMs. I haven't done those yet. Uh, the only KC task that I'm missing now is a hundred hard Motob. Oh, and and, and I'll get into I had that more too. Fuck, that was fifty uh, Temporos is painful. <laughs> Yeah, I'm glad I had that already. I'm glad I did like my 50 on release. Yeah, and I kind of wish I did hard Motaw on release. I I just never got to. I'm yeah. zero KC still, by the way. Like I uh, I really something. need to get hard Motaw done. But yeah, it was really fun, like banging out all these uh, bosses, like full clearing them. Like I just get a Hydra task, and then I just do like I do my Darok kill, and then I do a 20 kill trip, and also the speed run task. I'd be like doing like vent off ticking with like blowpipe. Like I like. It felt really exciting going back to all these bosses that I've already mastered and like proving that I re I know how to do them yeah. again. Like, like it felt like I was like really showing off uh, all my knowledge of the game by going to every boss and like showing that I've mastered it. Uh, just uh, perfecting each and every method for every boss that I've already done and going back to them. It felt so refreshing being able to just go do all these bosses that I've already finished on my iron. It felt really fun going back to like stuff like Hydra again, where I like relearn what I used to do. Like just just the sheer variety of combat achievements at the beginning was so much fun to me. But uh, now the sad thing is that I've sort of hit a, a brick wall uh, in combat achievements where I need teams now because yeah. I've full cleared the whole game. Let me quickly actually look at my combat tasks. I'm I'm just in game doing agility right now. Uh, what's your uh, what's your total see. right now? Out of 410? My total, so it's 410, right? I'm at 351. Okay. I have the whole game full cleared, except uh, I'm missing speed tasks at Cox. I'm missing speed tasks at CM. Uh, I'm missing one Fusani's Nightmare task, which is the sub-7. That's actually pretty hard, by the way. It's, sub -seven it's, just, it's just RNG. Really hard. It took Lake like but, yeah, two full It's just RNG, days. yeah. <laughs> I, might, uh, I might take Derox to Fusani and just like do one HP DH kills until I get like lucky DH hits and I get the sub seven that way. Cause the scythe is too consistent. Like there's almost no variance on my time because of how consistent the scythe is. Yeah. Maybe I'll switch to DH for that, but yeah, I'm still figuring that out, but that's the thing I'm doing in the game at the moment. If I don't get the speed task, I'll, I'll eventually get it. If I just grind out the KC. Yeah. Um, I'm missing like every top task. Same. So the, all the perfect top shit, um, all the speed tasks, uh, and Mauritania only. I haven't done those because, like, I just struggle to find a team. I'm zero to fourteen for hard Motob, Same. which is really sad. <laughs> uh, I have uh, all the Inferno shits to do still. I I'm waiting on Inferno because when I'd have Master done, I can get two yep. Zuck tasks at once, right? So That's smart. Inferno is like the last thing I do to get Grandmaster done. So I'm waiting until I can complete Master I to did it get in, all those done. I just got to say, I did an Inferno last night. I was very proud of myself. I got my fifth cape, and uh, I did the uh, triple jads, like killing them in 30 seconds or whatever. 
And then I... Oh, dude. What? Dude, the Jads. Oh, my God. The Jad challenges were so fun. They were I, so I, I fun. Those are the most fun I've had. Wait, have you done all of them? I, yes, I did them all in an hour. Yeah, no, they're fun. I knocked them out so fast, and they were so satisfying to they do. They were so fun. Dude, speedrunning five Jads was, like, actually, like... Like, it felt like I had to actually do it without being safe, like, without playing safe. Yep. Like, I went hard, and it felt great. All those Jad challenges were so much they fun. They were really so, yeah, fun. I all those and, and that was, like, my peak of combat they, achievements. See, like, okay, I was popping off. I, I sort of want to tell... Okay, the other thing I really enjoyed that I hated at first, but I kind of started getting addicted to it toward the end was were the gauntlet speedruns. They took me a while, because I've never really tried to rush gauntlet. So it was like kind of new to me, but those were really annoying at first, but they ended up being really enjoyable toward the end. I was like, damn, I feel like I'm actually improving and like learning and stuff. Um, Did you ever get a blade from, uh, from Corrupted Gauntlet or like a weapon seed? Yeah, I got one, but I, it was a blade initially. I got it like long time ago. Uh, but then I, I turned it into a Bofa. So I only, okay. So you've probably got the full crystal armor set then too. I actually have had 13 seeds, but I traded in eight of them because this is back when crystal, (laughs) this is, this is back when crystal armor was dog shit. And I was like, I'm just going to just chuck this It's not even worth being in my bank. But now oh, I have. I know many irons that had multiple blades, and they dropped them for bond money, yep. and they are very sad. Yep. I have I have the top and bottom. I'm literally just missing one armor seed for the helmet, just to re-obtain it, and then I just need another weapon seed for the blade. But I don't need the blade. I have a scythe. It's like I'm not even gonna use it. Yeah, blades like why go for it? Like I like I have one uh, seed as well. Like, okay. I, like I got one blade and then I just made it into a bow because obviously like the bow was yeah, very, exactly. way stronger than the blade. Uh, um, I, I wanted to ask about um, fuck. Now I'm missing it. Combat achievements. Yeah, it was something about it was it was a certain achievement I was gonna ask you about. The Jad challenges. Oh 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 oh. Here's what I was gonna say is, what do you think about the difficulty of Grandmaster? And before you before you respond. I was thinking, okay, Grandmaster is going to be, initially, I was really, I was a little scared. It was going to be just obnoxious. And I'm thinking, imagine doing a, uh, like, imagine doing, I don't know, Inferno or something where you can't lose a prayer point before, like, (laughs) Zook or just something stupid where it's just like, this is going to be so fucking hard, you know, like. What do you think of the difficulty of Grandmaster? A lot of the Grandmasters, it felt like you could just kind of do, as long as you've done the content for a little bit prior. Yeah, some of the Grandmaster tasks do not deserve to be Grandmaster. Like, killing Kriara with a Salamander should not be Grandmaster. It sounds Grandmaster, because it's like, wow, Salamanders suck ass, but yeah. it's like, you just bring, like, a full inventory of food, and, like, that's that's the task. Yeah. Like, that shouldn't be a Grandmaster task, in my opinion. Um, 15 Bandos for Grandmaster, I was like, I don't know. That used to be really tough, but like, dude, it should be fifteen listen. bandos with melee. Same thing with the Zami task. Dude. It should be twenty Zami with melee. That, you know that's what it should have been. You know what's fucking crazy? I di- so now I can get uh forty three boss tasks because I've completed the elite tier. So yeah. I got a forty three bandos task. I did it all melee in one go. Forty three fucking oh, kills. That is so sick. And I'm like, it was easy. Because I I don't even know why it was so easy, but like well Slayer helmet is gonna yeah Slayer helmet was just disgusting shit ton. But I I just remember being like man I I feel like I could only ever get like seven to eight kill trips flicking, but now it's like how the fuck did I pull off forty three? And then I guess I was thinking some of these tasks are just like I don't know they're like too they're too easy or something I don't know. Sometimes I'm like they're at a I think they're honestly at a, a pretty good difficulty. And, and I Have got you done a... your two hours of Sarah yet? Yes, that was so obnoxious. Yeah, it's like so dude, boring. Uh, like it should have been like a twenty kill trip with like an RCP. Like just make it shorter, but make it so you have to use like a shittier weapon. Like yeah, if you no, just use no, a like... Tebow, it's like wow, I, I, this is boring. Also, I feel like what it should have been is fifty kills without purple sweets. I just ate purple sweets. I was like, oh, you, you know what I did is uh <laughs> is I brought the Archaeus book and I brought Vile Vigor, and what happened to me was I just brought it as like just in case, like okay, every time I pray at the altar i'll just use the the spell to get my run energy back right oh and then nice, yeah. and then pray at the altar to refill my prayer
prayer anyway. But what ended up happening was I got so many prayer pot drops that I just didn't even use staminas at all because I was just chugging down pea pots the entire time. Yeah, you don't even need <laughs> stamps really there funny. anymore. Like I brought. Don't get me wrong. I still brought sweets just in case, right? Just in yeah. case, like. I would run out of stamps or something, but yeah, it just ended up happening where I got so many peapod drops. I just kept spamming this yeah. this spell, <laughs> and it was popping off. Like I was, I, I, it was the first time I'd ever tried it anywhere, and it was really funny how well it worked. And I was like, "Damn, this spell is actually pretty strong." When you keep getting prayer pots every second kill, yeah, that's pretty cool. I've never actually really used that spell. Now the the Sarah one would have been cool if it was do fifty kills. You cannot have purple sweets because. I was just fucking cheesing the whole thing. I, I was just AFKing <laughs> for two hours, and then I was just because I have like I have like twelve thousand sweets. Well, I did. And oh I, yeah, I've got I've got a large stack yeah. of sweets. I, I was just I was literally just eating them like candy. I'm like, all right, like just. <laughs> it was. It was. Yeah, really it just boring. invalidated all the challenge completely. Exactly. I agree. Yeah. I yeah. Think... It. I mean, I guess that's just inherently what's going to happen when Ooh. you've got a stackable food item. You've done the the no prayer, Jad. Yeah, that was funny. That, that was. was really I was just funny. hiding behind Italy Rock the entire time. <laughs> well, that's the thing is that I realized that a bat. Yeah. Also counts can... for losing prayer, so I was like, "Oh fuck, I have to actually safe spot everything." So I was using like the wiki's like spawn predictor thing. Yeah. <laughs> and I was playing so safe. Me too. It took a very long. It it was like a fifty minute cape. It was like fifty minutes of just like sweating, pretty much. Yeah. No, I just I was just one. I don't know. I was just clicking on my mage prayer here and there. I, I had my mage prayer on for two ticks. Luckily, it didn't go off. <laughs> Luckily. So I, I was, I was smart. So I'm kind of a nerd, right? So I know yeah. like little things about the game. So what I did before I did that task was I smited myself and then prayed at an altar so that my, Ooh, my, uh, like in the, my, like in between prayer point counter was yep. reset yep. so that if i had my mage prayer on for one tick it wouldn't drain me one prayer yeah so i had that leeway and i could go into the fight caves with that knowledge that okay if i fuck up a tick like it's fine like i don't fail yeah. the task immediately it was it was pretty again the thing with like it wasn't that bad to do it was just kind of obnoxious especially when you have max gear like when you have max gear blowpipe tebow and everything it's just don't even need to it was pray just, but i thought it was really funny like i thought it was like a fun new way to do fight yeah caves. yeah no i was so a little I stressed that variety. i was stressed out about it but then i was like for some reason still in my head i still think of fight caves as i did in 2015 because i just don't do it often where i'm like oh fight caves is pretty scary bro i could literally tank like three mages it's like it doesn't even matter just eat like Man, when I got my first fire cape in 2015 on like my fresh iron, I I popped off more than my first infernal cape because I was like, oh my god, I got a fire cape on an Iron Man back yep. in the uh, back when like you know, people thought Iron Man were really prestigious. Yeah. And I did it with like tuna potatoes and a couple prayer potions. RCB uh, probably. RCB, yeah. I I was using a fucking god stole because I yep. don't think I had a glory. <laughs> like like I felt like accomplished myself and I was really happy and. And, uh, yeah, I popped off when I got it because I was so excited. Like, the nerves when I was fighting Jad was like, oh, my God, dude, if I fuck up, I could die in one hit. Like, yep. like my nerves fighting Jad for the first time far outweigh the nerves I had when I was fighting Zuck for the first time. I'm Because, just... like, I matured a lot as a player in between yeah. those times. I'm, I'm just glad that uh, Jad is no longer scary in any way. In fact, six Jads isn't even scary. It's yeah, like, I think yeah. six jads. Uh, those tournament worlds. So I've done, I've done two six jads, and I haven't failed one yet. Out of, and, and that is pretty sick. Yeah, no, I'm really happy. I, I'm scared <laughs> to do it anymore. I love it so much. I'm scared to do it. But uh, I, uh, I had to ruin my uh, my death streak uh, on my iron because I had one death on fives, I think, and one death on sixes, and mm -hmm. I was like pretty pleased that I yeah. second tried six jads. You first tried six jads, dude. You're you're just a chad. <laughs> But, no, yeah, but for the speed test, like I have to play very, very risky, and like yeah. I have to maximize my DPS. So I, yeah, I was the, playing very aggressively. For the for the five jads, I've I've died like twelve times. I was just resetting, trying to hit two hammers. But oh yeah, um, yeah, no. But I I spent so much time doing six jads on tournament worlds years ago when they first came out, and um, so I just got really confident with it. But now 
even in Inferno, you know, like triple jabs used to be like just frightening. I'd just be shaking, you know, like concept, dude. When people were speculating if they were gonna add like double jabs from Kiln when they were first like releasing the Inferno, <laughs> and then they added three, and people were like shitting their pants, like wait there's never been three jads before and then the six jad challenge at runefest that one time where you'd see people like bodhi and wooks just like dying immediately like people yeah. thought it was like dude you're never gonna do this this is outrageously hard but of course the community finds a way to conquer any challenge nowadays yep it's insane uh you talk about the difficulty of grandmaster tasks like like i'm just gonna talk about how the community like they do find a way so and I've matured a lot as a player, so I, I understand that if there's something that I can't do, then I'm very much capable of learning how to do it yeah. and getting better. Like, like this Inferno speed task, it's like sub-65 Inferno. Like, I've never even gotten close to that time on Inferno because I haven't done much Inferno, but I trust that I'm a good enough player that I'm going to be able to learn how to be fast at the Inferno and get the time in, in, uh, in only a matter of time. So, so the difficulty of Grandmaster, it's like, if you're at that point where... You know, like, you can do all the content that Grandmaster covers. Like, you should be able to do Grandmaster tasks, no problem. People say, like, oh, yeah, I'll never be able to do Grandmaster. But but just trust in yourself that That's you'll be able practice. to learn things. Yeah. Like, y y human beings are very intelligent creatures. And uh, they are very capable of learning and overcoming new obstacles, as the community has shown time and time again. Uh, even when the bar is, is raised every time. Yep. So I, I, I am I'm pretty confident that eventually I'll get them all done, but but yeah, at the moment like I'm super gated on team tasks. I, I am really struggling to find teams. <laughs> there was this one guy who, who believed in me, his name's Undefeated, shout out him. Uh he he's like crazy talented player. Yeah, the dude a the dude has a nibbler pet and he was still speedrunning Inferno for fun on his iron because that's just like He's so good at the game, like, and he's mastered Inferno that he's just really has fun, just just pooping on Inferno all day, just making it look like a joke. And he was like PMing me on Discord, like, "Hey man, want to do like trio top, like get the top time?" And I'll be like, "Okay, dude, sure." And then like I'd keep making excuses, like, "Oh, let me eat dinner first. Like, oh, let me do this and that first. And then I just like sort of lost contact with him yeah. because I never was able to like get a team it, going. It's just sort of like one of those things where it's like you really got to be motivated to do it because. Yeah, no, like if, when people ask me, like, "Hey, you want to go do top?" It's like I have to be the one to initiate it because, like, I have to really want to go do it right then. If I'm getting, if I'm, if I'm being asked in any sort of like time where I'm just not exactly feeling it 100, percent I'm just gonna say no. Yeah, you really need the motivation, and and for me, the motivation, I grinded at a lot of top on on my main, like uh, like my normie account. Because I thought Tob was really fun, and I had a group of homies to do it with that was like a solid group of of three to four people all the time, and I was having a blast uh, just doing it with my friends. But it, it's really demotivating when you're like, when you know like, okay, well, my friends aren't really gonna cut it for hard mode Tob, like because yeah. they're not like the best, right? Like the people that I I typically raid with, like there's there, I got my homie QHP. He's like my my number one RuneScape friend at the moment, like he he's the homie. Like like I can I can do anything with him, but we we really lack like extras on top of that because mm. you need like three four or five people for these top speed tasks and and like CM and all the chamber speed tasks and stuff. So so I don't actually have like really good players that I can like form a large team with to to do these tasks with and that's the demotivating thing is i just don't like like talking to like randoms that i know are like good at the game like like undefeated like yeah we're like runescape friends but i i, I don't have a like an in-depth relationship with him so it's not yeah. like i'm like raiding with a close friend of mine you know like yep. like it, it just sucks when i'm like pming people that like they're, they'd be on my friends list and i would like never message them otherwise like i feel like such a uh, such a just a jerk messaging yeah, kinda... people out of nowhere like like you know like it feels like i have to ask like oh how you doing buddy like like <laughs> yeah, you know like try to like pretend like you're their friend almost yeah, yeah no. and, and then be like oh yeah let's let's top dude let's but you've got this ulterior motive going yeah. on where like oh you need good players to do these tasks with so it's crazy demotivating to me and it's just not something i wanted to do yeah. so i started a like sort of I guess I kind of benched combat achievements at that point, but but yeah, at the beginning, combat achievements were like so thrilling, just busting out all these tasks, like full clearing bosses left, right, and center. The the Jad challenges, of course, were unbelievably thrilling. Just getting them all done in an hour is probably the most fun hour I ever spent playing RuneScape in the past like three years or so. Yeah, tons uh, of fun. Yeah, but I'm really gated by all these just team tasks. Really fun. 
I just especially looking at like the grandmaster like CM time like the five man CM is apparently like really tough. And even the five man tob, apparently you have to one down bloat or you just don't get it. Shit. And that like requires like mains and shit to do because like there's lots of trading involved. Yeah, uh, I'm thinking like. Well, I I want to ask, what is something, what is a piece of advice you would give to those that don't feel like they'll ever achieve like the combat achievements, like either master or grandmaster? Because my personal thing is. You just have to go do it. Like those Inferno tasks are kind of intimidating to some. CM tasks are really intimidating to me because I've just not experienced that with, uh, experienced at them whatsoever. But like, you just got to go in there. You just literally got to just need go to, practice. To have the self confidence of yourself as a player, and as yourself as a human being, that you know, like if you don't have the talent to do something, then you know, a little bit of hard work uh, will will pay off gratuitously. Just uh, just take the time to learn it. Like, just just make an effort to get better, and you will. You always will. Yep. So if, if that is if you want to to get like all these tasks done, right? Like, the the motivation has to be there. And I know the rewards for combat achievements are very bad. Like like they're going from to get a buffed. like a design aspect. I mean, they're, they're like flex rewards, right? Yeah. So a lot of people don't really care to be that good at the game. They just want to play RuneScape casually. So it's not for everything, everyone. But if you do want to become a really good player and you want to become that guy with that Zuck helm, then uh, you just have to believe in yourself, basically. Just uh, put in the time and effort to get better. Like, it's no problem. Yeah, I think that I think the rewards are gonna get buffed. I, I again, I think because again, if they're gonna be pulled, it's gonna be really tough for the majority of the community to vote yes on something that's gonna be really beneficial, but they know they're not gonna get. <laughs> so it's like. I wonder what could pass, but I'm almost certain within the next few months there's going to be a new uh, perks for Master and we'll Grandmaster. See. If they're increasing the requirements to do Master and Grandmaster by adding like rate three stuff, then it would it would make sense for the rewards to be more fleshed out too, right? So, yeah, yeah, yeah I promise that there will be uh, more rewards in the future. It's just a matter of uh, just people putting their ideas out and the JMods liking it and then implementing them eventually. I was very set on exclusively just completing Elite and then being done forever. But it's just like, it was just calling for me, basically. Yeah, I mean, like Master yeah. master uh, Combat Achievements, like, oh yeah, you can kill two less goblins to get into God Wars. Yeah. Like, no, they're, they're very crappy perks. Uh, master and Grandmaster are really crappy. I, I have some suggestions for, like, better rewards. But I just know it'll be better for me to complete Grandmaster before they come out with the rewards, so I don't feel this pressure, like, fuck, like, I can't even... Yeah, like, you really don't want to have, like, the that... like the Infernal Cape situation here. Yeah. Or like... it's just going to become, you know, like, like, Services City, where people are, like, buying and selling services <laughs> oh, to each God. other just so that they can get, like, one strength bonus or some shit. What if they actually did come out with, uh, an imp or a, uh, like, a, an Infernal Cape trim that has, like, an extra two strength like I, I I personally don't even mind the combat achievements just being exclusively aesthetic. Like yeah, no, they're they're totally cool right now. Is more than enough of a reward. They're they're it's totally so cool dope. right now. Uh, I think they're really good. I there could be perks though. There could be additional perks that aren't game breaking, but just like ooh, that's nice. That's quality of life, you know. Better chance of master clues from master. Tier, that's all I was know, saying. Like... I was saying increase by five percent all the masters that come from lesser tier caskets so like hards you would get a master at one in 14 instead of one in 15 elites you'd get at one in four instead of one in five which is huge because that's not that even... sounds like a, a too big almost. i don't know like, i think the numbers don't work very i think it that. does work because elites are so shit right now that it would actually maybe encourage doing elite caskets so you get masters that's my that's, opinion that's how it works at scotizo though if you've got the elite Two done, you get one in four instead of one in five I'm from so, Scotizo. I'm so butthurt that I've opened any totems because that one in four is oh, such no. a huge 20%. Did you have any totems banked when you had to do the Scotizo challenges? No, I had to go grind out jellies. I went like that five is times unlucky. Oh, that is so unlucky. I, I had completed so many them totems except for the Chinchampa but... one. Do the... Oh, that was AIDS. What, what, I try to do, do I try to do too many tasks at once. I try to do the Chinchampa one with like the no damage one, and uh... yeah, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> Yeah, I've already done every single one except Chinchampa. That seems really simple. 
Yeah, it's just you just chin it like off the demons. It's fine. Yeah. Or maybe you just bring it low health first and then you chin it. Can't you just chuck a chin at Scotizo itself, or is that not? I can't, I don't remember what oh, I don't even remember. Probably, actually. I thought it just said kill. It. Just finish it off with a chin chompa. So like, oh, that's just free then. <laughs> yeah. I guess. Just oh, it's like it master. Then, oh, it's like a master. Come the task. chins. Um, yeah, but then the other thing I was thinking is for grandmaster. So they could have that for master again. These are just ideas. They don't need to come out. Uh, but then for master, it would be uh, you get an increased chance of a mimic. Oh, oh, I like that. Yeah. I forgot that you made that suggestion. I like that a lot. Just a slight increased chance yep, of a mimic is perfect. Slight little increases, and uh, just because that, that they already a lot have of their own clue updates. But th the thing is, like, I'm advocating for this kind of change. Kind of, I don't really care either way. But if it does pass, I'm going to be really butthurt if I don't have Grandmaster already completed, because then I'm just like hard. Stuck. Oh, that's true. So that's, that's why true. I'm doing it right now. I'm like, you know what? I should stop uh, calling out for. Like, well, you also have this completionist mentality, right? Like, yeah. So you're gonna want to get everything done eventually, anyway. Like you're 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 the kind of guy that just wants to go for the endless progression of just like oh finish collection log, oh do everything. Like yeah. like you probably have your eyes set on on like random shit down the line, like champion cape, like all those kind of things. Uh, like even maybe something as weird as like castle wars armor, maybe you'll eventually do because you've got that completionist mentality, right? Yeah. No. Yeah. Uh... So these are all things you'll eventually get to, no matter what the rewards for the combat achievements are. But yeah, it is very wise to get them done now before they buff it, and then you won't have that like pressure to do it. You know, now's the time. While uh, you know, elite caskets are getting uh, held on for dear life, uh, diamond hands. Like you can't even open elite caskets anymore. You might as well like uh, even just do uh, some stuff on the side before you really go on your. Uh, massive journey of uh you know it's 600,000 Seracnus or whatever that's it why is. I'm, that's why i'm getting more dude i hate stacking caskets i really do i just don't me enjoy too it. i i haven't opened a lead casket in so long and it's so sad i, I just I have to wait i don't so like long. stacking but on top even when pull 76 comes out and like let's say it gets passed and implemented i'm still gonna have regret i'm still gonna be thinking in the back of my mind like i shouldn't open these yet because you know maybe the next uh, perk update for the like the combat achievements are going to make elites so they shit out masters more frequently or something just there's always something and it's like ugh, i have to keep holding these stackable things almost like you've always got that thing you've got to think about though yeah. you, you just can't uh you can't help it sometimes I you, i'm gonna just, just, you just gotta live with six but it's just gonna it's gonna be one of those things where like god damn it like uh, thinking of the hundred scotizos i've done like that's an additional you know However many elite clues, like five. It's not that many, but. The game's gonna get devalued over time. Like, like uh, that's just something you gotta live with. Yeah. Uh, yeah. To summarize, combat achievements very fun on release. Tons of fun, and I'll probably have a lot of fun doing Inferno down the line if I eventually get these team tasks done. But yeah, like, like at the moment, like I just need teams, and it's very hard because I basically have to like ask for a charity service from like four other mains that know what they're doing in cm to get the five man teams done and like that applies to top as well like it, it just sucks that i don't have the the homies to do it you know like yeah. like i almost felt like being on this cast would be a, a good way to like <laughs> beg for some of the talented i, mean, I, I would love that listeners of the cast i would love to do some tops with you uh, we could even. Oh, I would love to do it with you too. It'd be more motivating for me to do it with like you know you. Yeah. Because uh, no, like I'd... we have a background together. Yep. Which is not the case with a lot of my friends, like people on my friends list that are really good at the game. I think so all the top ones fun. you just trio anyway. Nah, well, man. there are like the speed tasks which you are required to do at every scale. Oh, there's like. But yeah, the perfect okay. top task like that's trio for sure. And yeah, just hit me up and I will. Uh, I will definitely make an excuse to get onto the game and uh Yeah, and do no, that'd, be that'd be fun. We just got to get a third. Stream and... content, baby. Yeah. No, is uh wait, you were saying you do it I think you do it with QHP. Is he really good? Oh, well, <laughs> I wouldn't say he's really good, but he 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 can be a bit of a dunce sometimes. <laughs> Cuz we got to uh, get those perfect ones done. So it's like I mean, I'm also shit at the game, but like you know, I'll, yeah, yeah. I'll sweat. He, he, dude, I know for sure he's going to be listening to this cast. Uh, <laughs> and, and maybe he'll feel a little bad when I when I say he has boomer moments. <laughs> but uh, we, yeah, all, we, we, we have we a long history mistakes. of doing top together. We all make mistakes, yeah, yeah of course. 
naturally. Um, yeah, we can get the homie in on that too as well. Yeah. Just the three of us, dude. That could be, be a I, could I, be an idea for sure. I gotta do those team ones, but I also have so much other, th so many other things. Like I have to do a hundred CMs. I have to do a hundred uh, hard modes. Is well, it, I need a hundred hard mode top too. It's a hundred, right? Yeah, it's a hundred. Yeah, so and I, that's all stuff I need as well. So we'll just match our own individual yeah. needs. See, what the, would be cool thing... is just like to just do trio hard modes until we feel comfortable, and then we can just start sending like the other challenges. We'd like passively work until we. Yeah, that, that's a good idea. Comfy, because that's what I'm planning on with Inferno. Is like I have to do 10 KC regardless. I'm at five. And it's like I just want to get comfy with it. So doing up to 10, and then and then even then doing like the 10 Inferno is the Grandmaster task, right? The what? The 10 Inferno is Grandmaster, yeah. isn't it? Yep. I I'm not thinking about that at all because I know like I'm gonna have to get better at the Inferno by sending lots <laughs> exactly. of runs anyway. The 10 so is it's gonna whatever. be a while before I get the speed test done. So that's just yeah. gonna become passive over time for sure yeah inferno has been fun though like last night I, I ran one and i completed it i was like okay like that was that was really fun and so i'm excited for the uh future tasks when I you do. have to get good at it yeah i got a 77 minute last time which is like i wasn't even trying to go fast i was just trying to complete it and i did the triple That's jab good. one which is like kill all of them within 30 seconds so you have to just keep them all oh, alive make them low health. yeah that's cool that yeah and so uh did you tag all the healers or did you just, just kill them all i literally just killed all the healers i was like this is i you didn't yeah, even need to kill them but i didn't like a million healers yeah like i i just didn't want to chance myself by trying to pull out some stupid maneuver like oh let me try try to block them and then i accidentally get meleeed and then they're like off tick and shit i was like i'm just gonna kill these yeah that's that's fair enough um yeah, I uh, Inferno still stresses me the fuck out. It I does. Still have that, it, like, do it does. But listen, where... man, like, like you said, just you put in a little bit of practice. All of a sudden, it's just like getting a little bit easier, a little yeah, bit easier. This is like... something I'm gonna get used to. That's all. Exactly. Um, uh, once I get used to it, Inferno is gonna be so fun. Like, once I like don't mind like dying yeah. to something in the Inferno, I I'll be so good at it. Yeah. I think. I just have to like. Cause I still get like shivers when I do Inferno, and even when I think <laughs> yeah. about doing Inferno, it gives yeah. me shivers. And once that goes away, like it's it's popping yeah. off time. But that yeah. that's when it's gaming time. Absolutely. Now Inferno, like I see people just absolutely loving it. I'm like, man, I want that. I want to love it, and I know I will if I just put in a little bit more time. So. All right, let me. Uh... Yeah, that's gonna be me soon. I, I just have to do Master first, the uh, Master tasks first, so that I can get that double Zuck task going on before I can touch Inferno. But that, I plan on doing that at the very end. Like once I've done all the team tasks, that's when it's like the the home stretch, right? Like that's yeah. when I fight my biggest uh, my biggest fear, which is the inferno, <laughs> and then finally get it done. And then and then I end combat achievements on a great note, rather yeah. than just like getting like carried in a five man CM, pretty yeah. much. Like that would be a shit way to end the end the experience. I gotta say, it is really fun. Like proving to yourself that you're good at the game and that you can tackle all these challenges but for me personally i'm not actually a challenge driven player like like I, i'm more of a like just a grinder in general like like what i like to do the most in in the game is just turn on some music to just vibe to and uh and just grind what i'm good at like for drops you know like like that that's what i'm that's basically the only thing i'm doing right now is i'm just doing fasani exclusively um I'm I'm still hunting this mace. I don't really need the mace either. Is the thing like I don't have this overarching goal of oh you know I'm gonna get this mace and then I'm gonna do six hundred thousand Seracnus with it. Like I don't even have that mentality. I just have the mentality of okay this is like a really cool weapon that I could use to like do soul CM again, hunt omelet, and I can use it as like a gear upgrade for when I do CMs and stuff. Yep. Um. But it's, it's not like I plan on using the maze excessively. Like, yeah. it, it's just like a nice thing to have in in the bank, you know, like another addition to the Iron Man armory. It looks so sexy. <laughs> oh, I bet it does, especially on the ground before you pick it up. Bruh, yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna show everybody. Look at that! Like, holy fuck! So powerful. It's pink, dude. It's like it's like the little lights pink. Oh my god. I hate drawing. Oh, like it. the loot it's, beam? Yeah, the loot beam. Oh, I, oh, or the ground items uh, plugin giving it the the text over top the, of it. The, yeah, the text and the beam are both per, are both pink. They look so good. It's like oh, 
I didn't even get you know the what? beam when I got it though. I didn't get the beam. You know what's crazy is that I haven't actually been doing like a whole lot of Fasani. Like like you busted out like what is it like ninety KC in one stream? Yeah, eighty three or eighty four. Eighty eighty four in one stream. Like that was the day of release, and it's been a <laughs> while since Fasani's came out, right? And I've been playing so seldom. I'm only a hundred and fifty KC since release. Like, and that's the only thing I've, I've been doing. Yeah. Like, that is how little I've been playing RS at the moment, and it's very sad. But but even even with that in mind, like, what's wild is that only two days ago, I got my second Harmonized Orb. And Damn. And I, I just see, like, the red text, just Harmonized Orb, 800 mil, and like, whoa, what, what the fuck is this? What are you doing here, dude? It's, that's not my maze. It's crazy. That, I mean, because, I mean, I've, I've had two harms as well. I just remember how crazy it was. To see a harm on the ground at a normal nightmare, it's like, <laughs> just like, it's just like everything just feels so incredibly rare. But it's like you seeing that's like holy fuck! I just hit the jackpot, like, and then getting it twice, like damn. But yeah, it, it it it's so weird getting a really expensive dupe item. Like I felt yeah. that way with Scythe as well, especially when Scythe was so expensive. It's like, it it, it it's like it 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 always seems like. It, the the first time you get an item takes a while, and then the dupes just come flowing in. Yep, it's like so always. weird how the dupes feel so easy every time. It's like it's like I know that this is a Rice Cup had a good uh, had a good story on this. How he he grinded like a shit ton of solar rates for his first Tebo, and then he got a second Tebo like a week later. And it, he he talked about how dumb it feels. Like it just makes the Tebo grind feel like like nothing yep. almost. Like oh, it yep. just happens. Like. Like it, it's kind of a abstract sort of feel now, in that if, regard. Getting no, seriously, if, if I were to get, item. I'm like, I'm like, what, 130 KC at Fasani's right now. If I were to get another maze, I'd be like, <laughs> I'd just be pissed off. At that you point. did more Fasani after maze? Yeah, I've done a little bit more, just because I'm missing a a parasitic egg and the eldritch still. So the egg doesn't seem to be that rare. It's only like one in like 200 or something. Apparently. Yeah, I think that says it on the wiki, like one in 200 ish. So I need to get the egg, which would be cool because I have four pets. I have zero still. I'm dry on the pet. I, I'm missing... Uh, I, I haven't gotten the jar either, so I'm missing pet, jar, mace, and eldritch. I've had two volatiles, two harm, uh, a lot of inquisitor, a lot of staves, and uh, yeah, I've been pretty lucky on nightmare drops. Like, I've, like I'm definitely overrated on items, yeah. especially like like expensive, like orbs too like I i'm definitely making more money per hour than an average person doing nightmare and I'm pretty fortunate for that um but yeah i've gotten to the stage where like 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 i, I, like I said like i'm a grinder I, I just like just like putting hours into content that i'm good at as like a means to an end sort of thing just to make the time go by almost where it gives me something to do while i'm just on discord chatting with people just yeah. having a good time like listening to music even just just something to just zone out to i i really like that aspect of it and uh it, it almost makes me sad at this point when i do eventually get the maze it just means that i can no longer do the content that i like doing and then i have to get into that state again where i have to learn something yeah and then get into that zone again where like I I, uh, I have to relearn something and then get into the rhythm of just grinding it because that's the part of the game that I really enjoy the most. So for me, of course, combat achievements is very exciting, showing off that you're to yourself that you're good at the game. But uh, like for the most part, I just like mindlessly grinding away at stuff. So combat achievements aren't like the most appealing to me. I'm I'm not a mole goat Kirby. I'm not like exactly. constantly yeah, I... pushing myself to do challenges, right? So you. so I almost feel like I'm. I'm almost obligated to do challenges that I'm not really terrifically interested in doing, and uh, I'm not super motivated in, in in finishing Grandmaster right now, especially with like my current lack of teams. Yep. But uh, it is it is of course fun when I do eventually get into it. So maybe I just have to think to myself how much fun I'm gonna have, uh, like doing all the Inferno tasks, um, and then feel that uh, gratification at the end when I do eventually get them all done. Yeah. I just have to think about that to look forward to. But uh, yeah, I, I think I've proven enough to myself over the years that like I'm I'm very capable of doing things. So I almost feel like doing common achievements is like a it's not really like worth it to me anymore to, to prove to myself that I'm I know what I'm doing or that I know I'm good at the game because like I already just inherently feel that yeah. I, I have enough self confidence in myself and I'm pretty pleased with with uh like you know my history playing the game so it's almost like i'm not motivated to do these challenges because i just feel like uh 
I've already proven enough to myself, there's, you know. There's just not enough of a perk. Like, I'm I'm completely with you where it's just like, I really just want to rush the Zuck helmet, but it's just like, eh, like, eh. Oh, I'd love to, too, but, know, it's, but just, it's just, it's it's just the barrier of just yeah, being unable just, to find people. The, yeah, the it's, like, it's, like, to, it's like that, and just also just like, okay, I just got to grind out like 100 CMs. Like, okay, let's just do this. Like, just, let's just do it. But like sometimes I'll be motivated, and then sometimes I'm like, dude, that just sounds like so much effort. But I want to get it. The Zook helmet, it's like it reminds me of getting an Infernal Cape. I remember that urge, that just – urge of like back in 2018 or uh no no no. It was, oh yeah it was 2018 wow because inferno came inferno, out 2017. I thought it was 2017 yeah. yeah inferno came out 2017 i got mine a year after like exactly a year after and uh i just remember thinking like i had this rush of motivation like i will not do anything in the game until i get this cape <laughs> and it was just that's what and then i remember getting the cape and i'm and i remember having the sense of confidence like nothing else will stop me like i don't want anything Anything else that comes out of the game, I don't want. I don't want to be so intimidated by it that I'm not going to do it. Like I, I just want to do it. And uh, so that's this is like that new inferno. It's like a set of tasks. I got to do them. And I've been maxed for so. I was saying this in my ramble. I have all the quests completed, achievement diaries, uh, max total level, all mu music tracks and everything. But now I got this new set of tasks where it's like, ooh, I get that like. You know, I'm not completed you, you anymore. You can prove yourself. Uh, I got to complete. You know, worthy the of the status. Yeah, that, and I'm really excited because that helmet is just badass, dude. It's honestly so dope. <laughs> it's so dope. Like you go slay with that thing. Ugh. I don't even know where I'd wear the helmet because everything I got to do is like off task. Like like Taba. Like I guess I guess if I finished Grandmaster, like what would I do on my Iron at that point? Like like yeah. getting the Zuck Helm was yeah. like finishing the game. It's like <laughs> getting crowned, like you know, you you are the the winner. But that's what uh, also you can felt... now quit RuneScape yeah. and then it just rolls the credits. Like after you get the Zuck Helm, that was like just an infer... like, that was like goer, Paul goer, that was like goer. a Max Infernal Cape. That feels like you even played at the game. The the cool thing is like I have so much Konar Slider to do for Dusk. There's so many melee tasks you do. And so I get to flex that helmet during that. So it's like, oh hell! Before yeah. I go back on the Slayer grind for all that shit, I gotta get that helmet. You gotta do something like just, just go, just do your like Bloodville tasks in like Neve's Cave or some shit. Do where, every you know, like, any excuse to do a melee task. People. Yeah. And then someone just go on walks World by with like their like shitty range yeah. gear when they're about to save spot some hellhounds or just look at you like, <laughs> whoa, dude, that guy's a fucking gamer. Yeah. Shout yeah, out yeah. Ginny, by the way. Ginny was the first person to complete it. Oh, I, dude, I saw Ginny got the first, and I was so envious of just the homies that Ginny has. Like, like uh, he's part of Neat Chord. Yeah. And and they really worked hard to make Ginny like the 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 first iron to get it. Um, so I was like super envious and almost like like uh, malevolent towards like just the thought of Jenny getting it first because I was really envious because like ideally like I'd love to be the first person to get this Zuck count but yeah. I knew like I had to do 100 hard yeah. one top like I was just like it was impossible for me to get it on release basically yeah. so I was super envious of Jenny but yeah I know I know him and uh, he's obviously very talented and yeah. has very talented friends as well um, so yeah it, it made sense and uh, congrats to him for sure um does that make him the best person in the game? Uh, probably not, but still, I mean, you gotta be pretty fucking. You gotta to get. You gotta the sweat your ass off done. for oh, like yeah. the beginning. Like I, I just can't even imagine how many hours he was playing a day. Well, just... it took a week too. That was so fast. No, it was like it was a little that, bit more that, than a week. That in itself is a crazy achievement. It was beyond a week, wasn't it? Did... It was one week out, and then Ginny got the first. It was just one and... week. Yep. Holy fuck. So I got my, uh, well my. naturally an iron will get it first because they've already like full cleared the game yeah, already yeah. so they don't have to do KC challenges yeah. like like people were speculating someone like Adicon or Molgo Kirby would get it first but they don't do shit like fucking deranged archaeologists yep. you know like and will the bosses <laughs> like, most of them the, the time. irons inherently have that advantage of uh of having the KC done already so all it took was an iron that had all the KCs done for most of the content in the game yeah that like took a long time to do and then also having like the friends the homies to get the team tasks done with and Ginny yeah. was the 
perfect combination of all those things. Yeah. Very Shout impressive, regardless, even with the teams like gone, you know, just you gotta be a gamer to do all that shit in a week. Oh yeah. Anyway, but yeah, that's that's pretty huge. That was really cool because I was genuinely because I remember talking to Mod Arcane and Mod Husky. I was like, when is I think Mod Arcane was the one I was talking to. I was like, so how long do you think it'll be until the first person completes all Grandmaster and lower? And he was like, probably two to three months, he said. Yeah, nah, nah, nah. One nah, week. Nah. But he was probably assuming, like, if you were to start from, like, zero KCs with all these bosses and stuff. But when you have all the oh, KC uh, stuff done, it's like... Yeah, it, starting with the KC is the most important thing, for yep. sure. Shoutouts to uh, Joker as well. He got his Zuck Helm two days ago. He, he's a beast. He, yeah. yeah, I talked to him. Uh, no, he's he's probably, like, one of the more... I, I probably PM him on RuneScape more than anyone else, so uh, shout-outs to him for getting his Zuck Helm. He's a very talented gamer. Yep. A lot of the solitary people are are gamers. They, they, yep, um, they've been going and, ham uh, on combat achievements. They, there's a lot of gamers in solitary, but not everyone in solitary is good. It's it's actually a minority of people who oh, are yeah. like, no, good enough I... to Grandmaster, so... so I feel bad for not being in solitary anymore, but then again, I don't, because everyone that's like like good enough to do grandmaster in solitary i'm already friends with anyway so it's like nothing's lost in that <laughs> yeah. regard like it, it felt like maybe i should have been in solitary still just to be able to find teams but it, it ultimately didn't matter in the end i knew everyone in solitary anyway you should just join a clan like i'm in olympus i don't even know if there's anybody in olympus that has this, well see I, I i would join olympus if if they did uh stuff like you know speed five man cms but they yeah, don't. you're not gonna find like that. <laughs> they advertise themselves as you know like a skilling slash pvm clan but ultimately it's still the same skilling clan it's been for years yeah it's, there it's there still are... like you know erudite uh yeah uh, with its origin it's uh it, i don't think a clan like olympus would even cut it for uh getting those done i pretty much just have to find mains uh that, that, that's <laughs> yeah, what it comes down much. to is i just need to other mains and 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 mains are really good at tob it's all i fucking do oh yeah oh yeah like far better than irons yeah 100 percent. so it's just a matter of getting the mains and uh being an iron it sucks because like i'm normally in an iron community right like like naturally as an iron man i would be like gravitated towards being friends with I other irons that share the same experiences with me so i don't have very many main friends and and that's what really uh, makes me struggle to get to uh, the team tasks done for ca all right what do you think about group iron we haven't even covered it at all are you gonna play group iron man not playing group iron uh i'm going to be watching the like few months that group iron is big on twitch and then it's going to die <laughs> it <laughs> yeah. is definitely going to die okay so listen i was thinking i've been considering making a duo iron man that's played by me exclusively just I'd play both accounts. That sounds like something Alfie would do. Just, just like, <laughs> like play group iron, but just play with four of your own accounts. Yeah. Just... No. Well, well, the issue is, is like everyone fucking burns out, and I don't want some guy that's just gonna burn out on me. Like, yeah, like, okay, this this is why I'm considering playing group iron man because hardcore iron man release was the most fun I've ever had playing this game. The the fresh high scores, the initial competition was so fun, so thrilling. The issue with group Iron Man is fucking groups, which I'm not a hit, not a fan of, obviously. But um, <laughs> it would be cool to just start on release and do some AFK shit on it. Just don't actually take it seriously, but at least have it there so it's like see yeah, how it goes. That's a good idea. I don't know. That's just how I feel because I know a lot of people regretted not starting like hardcore on release or Iron Man on release or just all these other things where it's like you get that head start in front of everyone and you know who knows it could be fun. The, the high scores are going to be really fun. And I kind of want to go for something. I don't even know what I really wanted to go for rank one Fasani and then day one Mace happened. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I was rank one Fasani, though. And I got my Mace. Were, that was one. true. Even among mains, too. Yeah. They could have used, like, alts to, like, be number one and out, outpace you. But you still be dude. Scotty could have. I mean, Scotty was ahead of me, but then he, like calm down at 50 he just kind of scotty's got better things to do like get another vorkath world record scotty is insane scotty's <laughs> put so much time into the most like 
they just seem miserable. Like to do Dude, these. That was another fun thing about combat achievements is the Vorkath tasks were like really fun. Like that was getting fun. the Vorkath speed task. Like yeah. I copied what Scotty did. Like, I cop- Scotty has like this guide. I just copied what he did and just kept yep. grinding out resets. And, yeah, and that, the, and that was like a brand new experience for me resetting a boss until I got the time I wanted. It was it was probably like the Molgoat guide. I'm assuming Molgoat Kirby had like. It was it was Scotty. It was uh, Scotty uh, made a guide on like. Uh, okay. Like how many they're probably the hits same. Do, how many yeah. HP hits. Maybe they're they're probably identical, but yeah, Scotty uh was the one that post method. Maybe he wasn't the one that made it, but he yeah, might he, uh, he, he might have been the one that made it. I just watched the Molgo Kirby uh YouTube and there's like a, a frame. Oh, in this the video. was before the Molgo Kirby video. Oh, okay, okay. So it's probably so the, this was a same. this was just a text file on what to do. Oh, okay. And I just understood it uh Followed it and it took like uh, it, it actually took a while. It was like three hours to get that speed test done because yeah. it, it takes quite a lot of RNG. Yeah, it was fun though. That one was fun. The Zora one, I didn't follow any guide. I just, I just went in there and just eventually got. Oh, it. I I popped off with just fire surge with harm staff and it was very easy. All, all it took was one green rotation and I just I just got it. Yeah. It was so easy because I saw like there were speed methods for Zora that was like. Like there was, there's two versions of it. There's the blue one and the green one. And the blue one required like specific number of blowpipe to Tebow hits, like dragon knife specs. I don't have a single dragon knife on my iron, so I was like, uh, what I did was I just looked at the green one. It was like, it was literally like 10x harm. So I was like, oh yeah, let's just go for that instead. Looks way easier. So the first green rotation I got, I just popped off, <laughs> and that was that. that. That took like 30 minutes of Zora nice. to get that task done. I think I got very lucky. But uh, yeah, just all I did was I just did Zora normally, uh, and just popped off when I needed it, and that was that done. Nice. The that was uh, fun. I I really like the Gauntlet ones too. Those were addicting. I wasn't even enjoying it, but it was just like I couldn't go to sleep. I was just like <laughs> reset, reset. It was just like the, the, the like the addiction of it. Like I got to get the perfect layout. It was so addicting. I stayed up for like six hours straight until like wow. four a.m. I did all the corrupted gauntlet tasks uh, in advance. Oh, and by the way, I was very sad that there was no Ramadan uh, corrupted gauntlet challenge because that's something I like. The number one thing I wanted to add it was a corrupted gauntlet with no food. Uh, oh shit! That, that's but, what I wanted. So but, this that would because I, I already been... did it. I already play tested it to see if it was possible, and it it felt great getting tier three and then just killing yeah. uh, Hanlef with redemption because you cannot get hit more than eight if you that play correct. That would have been a really cool task. Damn. Uh, yeah, I was sad. And it, it, like Ramadan run, dude. Like, uh, like it would have been a great, uh, a great thing. But yeah. you know what? I can't. You can't have everything. I guess. Yeah. Maybe I. Maybe I didn't use my save a agenda to push it to to the J mods to <laughs> add that as a challenge. But and anyway, yeah, I think we've wrapped up C eight already. We yeah. we want to try to move on here. Uh, pretty pretty astonishing that we've gone for this long, despite having no Twitter topics, no. <laughs> no, it's been three hours almost. <laughs> I, 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 uh, yeah, um, in, in any case, like, Group Iron, like, like, for me, the number one reason to start Group Iron is to have an additional eight, 816 bank spaces for free, to have a fucking Iron Mule account no, that's... that that you just, like, trade shit to. I'm gonna that tell sounds you... pretty nice. I'm gonna tell you some of the issues with Group Iron Man, though. Like, things that you don't even think of. So, one of the things was, I was thinking, oh, I could just have an account that, like, AFK's day alt you know, all day, and then it just trades it over to the other. I mean, I'm like, oh, yeah, you can't trade any untradeable. Day alt's untradeable. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, I wanted I wanted Group Iron to so that you could trade everything. I thought that would be a really cool aspect of it, like being able to trade stuff like Infernal Capes. Um, that would be even just... Even Skill Capes, but you wouldn't be able to wear them. <laughs> that would just Quest be too items, busted, though. That would be too much QA. It would be to too busted because so you'd, you, like, you'd have a level 3 skiller with an Infernal Cape, and the game would just start, start looking private servery. That's pretty true, I suppose. But just the th- level three with Infernal, and then other people can see it. I guess that's pretty bad. Yeah, there, uh, there's issues with it, and Group Iron Man. It's just, uh, I just am kind of sad that we were all so so addicted to this idea of Group Iron Man back in like 2016, 2017. Now it's like they like just promised you it. You say everyone, but 
uh, I I knew it was a bad idea from the start. And I never understood the popularity, but I guess it's just like you know, everyone wanted like, it because people the... that play the game casually are yeah. like really interested in like playing with their friends. I guess the idea of it, it's cool, and then you start thinking of all the limitations and all the other bullshit. It's like ah, uh, like people don't think about it too much. Just wait until it actually comes out. People are gonna be like, all right, this kind of sucks. There's... It'll be fun to watch. The... It's gonna be Twitch content for sure on yeah. release. Like it's gonna be fun. Um, I, I'd, I'd feel kind of sad if you like invested too much time in Group Iron though, because I do want to see you go uh, on your six hundred thousand Seracnus journey. That's the thing. I, I, I have, I have get, no. Uh, I, I have absolutely no plan to uh, have any Group Iron Man content take over this account. I just think I'd be almost again. This is me right now. I could in a month just be like, "Fuck it, I'm not even gonna do Group Iron." But right now, I'm thinking I really just should make a Group Iron Man on release and just do something on the side just something so afk that i don't even have to think about it but i don't know i hate playing two accounts at once you know there there is some incentive for me to play a new iron i will say like like to go through the game again with all the knowledge that i have yep from my previous adventure like like that sounds like a lot of fun and that that's what i had a lot of fun on on my on my alt account uh doesn't tip um is like i had so much fun like routing out how like how i would efficiently like get my uh account to a status where i could like top with it like i like what i basically routed was an alt with a, an achievement diary cape because at that point it's like skills don't matter anymore yeah. um and then i'd have an alt that could just do whatever it wanted right so i routed out with all the knowledge that i've accumulated over all the years of playing the game and i came out with this super sick route and i just went with it and i had so much fun like like uh you know maximizing like afk time with it maximizing like like when i wanted to actually play on the account and put effort into it uh, and focus on one account only at uh like at once so what i ended up doing was i had this super sick agility route where i never touched a single course until i had candor and hard done and i my first course was level 70 uh sears with diary done and it felt so awesome skipping all that early agility yeah. i i quested to like 40 agility um and then i barb fished to 70 agility like i barb fished to 91 fishing because that's what you need for mauritania elite yep. and then i skipped all that agility and it felt so efficient how fast i was going not only did i barb fish at all but i barb fished while my iron was topping so i'd be like doing like verzik p2 while i'm like shift dropping fish on my alt like it, it was fucking amazing i had so much fun playing through the game j just on a main and it would be fun doing it again on an iron where you can like route out efficiently like what you want to do like yep. like and, and that's the really cool thing about uh about starting another iron is that you can do a route that only like gamers can do like you can do like a like a strategy where you skip slayer early and you just rush like corrupted gauntlet yep. and stuff where because uh, there's some really cool concepts where instead of being forced to do 87 Slayer mm -hmm. uh, to get a trident, you could skip that by doing Tob and getting a Sang as your first mage weapon. Yep. No, there are so many. And the other cool thing about Group Iron Man, like there are cool things about it. One of them is like you can alt things now, basically. <laughs> or you can you can actually do things together and do things. I, I can't say yeah, more efficiently. Yeah, Group Iron has some really cool uh, aspects to it yeah. in that sense, yeah. Because I, I feel like most efficiently is just everyone solos their own shit, but like you still get that, you know, you, you still get the choice of like getting to like do things more efficiently. You get to like trade your iron. Like imagine you're doing something that involves, I don't know, like think about just, <laughs> I don't know. This is really, this is a really pointless thing, but I was thinking of like the two tick dark crab method. Um, you just have you, your group iron buddies. You can literally have your like, group like kidding. you can <laughs> have your all, and you can just have them sitting there, and you can just trade them over the fish. <laughs> just oh yeah, true. Like like shit like that, where it's just like there's there's things where I want to play a group Iron Man and just have this shitty alt that does nothing, but just helps me, <laughs> helps my main account, you know. Dude, the, the birth of doesn't tip. The reason I made that account in the first place was to have a fucking alt to hold the crafting, like in the crafting <laughs> guild, the, the tanner. Yeah, I made the account for the sole explicit purpose 
<laughs> of of holding the tanner at the staircase. That was the birth of the main. Like, and like, uh, yeah, I had so much fun like decking him out like full dark tuxedo. Like like that that's my thing nowadays. Is I have dark, uh, I have dozen tip decked out in full dark tuxedo. That's awesome. And by the way, your I hope butler, you, your iron butler. eventually has full dark tuxedo as well. Um, but yeah, it's like my personal butler, dude. Like, that's exactly what I want. Me. Like group Iron Man. It's like I I just want to play a duo group Iron Man. Have one main dude and then just a slave basically to the dude just like you are just the slave to this guy and you'll just that do is awesome so that that's what i'm considering uh we'll see i'm not gonna main it like i said like i'm i'm so addicted to this account uh but it would be it would be cool to like afk something and i'm even considering doing some sort of afk grind where i can make it easier with like an alternate account so I don't know, just something where it's like he's like my personal bank at this point. I can do something where like that requires banking, and then my alt or like the 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 butler guy is just my personal mobile <laughs> bank. He's like my pack yak, basically. That that's what uh, I'm considering anyway. A lot of people that do like dolo like God Wars and stuff probably really like doing stuff like that, and I bet Group Iron would appeal to them in that sense where yeah. they can like basically play alt man mode, but to me, the the biggest draw to Group Iron is obviously playing with your homies. Yeah. Like that is that is by far the the biggest drawing factor to that. Uh, and uh, I mean, like, yeah, I could have fun playing another Iron, and like, what I would be doing is I'd be rushing PVM, and then I'd have like my homies like basically doing the shitty things for me, like the herb lore part, <laughs> yeah. and then they'd feed me, and then I'd just be like feeding them like crystal armor you know like like uh giving them end game uh pvm drops and then they could have fun with that like <laughs> dude just imagine just like you have this friend that like barely plays and you just give him like an inquisitor base when he hits 75 attack God. on his on his iron like yeah here bro train strength with this is real good oh hey thanks buddy <laughs> the but game's yeah, gonna a lot start of problems uh, there are gonna be some iron. weird ass accounts you're gonna start seeing around the game soon just with crazy items just like what the fuck like <laughs> yeah it's gonna be fun seeing like level 70s with like armor that they definitely should not have access to at that point in the game and then you're gonna know like oh yeah they got fed they got they got you know a pretty talented player that's just feeding them items. So I wonder uh, what the new symbol is gonna look like. I I think it's gonna look like the Iron Man helmet next to your name, except it's gonna be like a little overlap, like almost like the little shadow of it, right over. Well, you know how it. a friend, how the mini map shows friends as just green dots. I, I would yeah. I would just think it'd just be a green Iron Man symbol, green as in like representing okay. like friendship. But but like how would you are are you gonna is there gonna be a way to indicate whether you're in like a two-man or a five-man team oh that's a good point that, that's what i was saying like those little shadows might actually help if like you typed and it would just show two little helmets kind of overlapping each other or, five. or just like a little two like as an underscore to your icon that's true it could just be a little just number a, you know uh it's just a green iron man symbol with a two next to it. i don't know how they'll implement that that's that's a good thought though i haven't thought of that yeah We'll see. I'm excited for it, regardless. Uh, Leagues 3. I That's need... another thing we haven't got into. Um, so I never played Twisted League. I never played uh, Trailblazers. <laughs> I loved watching it. And I loved the uh, you know the account build style of Trailblazers, where like you, you pick your three regions, and then that's your strategy. Because every region had its benefits. Uh, even the shitty ones like Desert had their benefits. And you could have a certain account builds. Like, dude, my absolute favorite part of watching Trailblazers was watching DJ Cumboy turn on his stream out of nowhere. Um, shout out CJ Cumboy, by the way. He's part of the <laughs> Uncle Uncle Cord crew. Um, he, he just turns on his stream one day and he's just ice barraging Zuck. He's like, no one has even gotten close to Inferno on Trailblazers. And he's like day three, just cooking up Zuck with like some weird three tick barrage that just never splashes. And his chat was booming. He had like 2k viewers on Twitch and his chat was just like spamming like spam this boy to help come boy. Like just the whale cooking emote. Oh my God, dude. Oh my God. I missed it. It was so fun. I, I, and, were and telling me I wish about he it, got the first Infernal Cape, but he planked. He, yeah. he he choked. Uh you hate to see it. But yeah, like 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 all the bugs that were associated with Trailblazers was really funny. Uh 
I, I just loved watching the account, uh, like the variety in account builds that you could do. Yeah. Like you could have this mage build that's just absolutely decked out with like, you know, like it's got Mauritania desert and, uh, I don't know what else, uh, you, you'd get like a nightmare staff or like a, like some crazy, like special attack build with like a volatile orb is like an end game item that you want to get. So you'd get like outrageous amounts of volatile specs, like 25% or even 20% volatile staff specs. And you'd just be popping off with mage the entire time. Like there, there were so many things you could do. Uh, that that you know I, again like that this this sort of wrapped around with what I was saying before where I want Jagex to give the players the freedom of choice to do what they want right yep. and and Trailblazer was a perfect uh, example of that where they give you all these different relics all these different perks and all all these regions that you could choose to really like come up with your own strategy to to, to blaze your own trail I guess is what they were going for and and it worked phenomenally like like that's all Jagex needs to do when they come up with new stuff even if it's it could be a new raid it could be a new league just give players the freedom of choice to approach things the way they want to and you'll have a very successful uh time coming up with new content yep i completely agree i don't know if i'll do uh leagues three i keep saying like i'll do the next leagues and stuff but i just hate the fact that shit gets deleted like it's uh unlucky yeah man. that's just a, that's just a problem with how you play the game you you play for the endless progression aspect yeah. and there is none of that with uh with leagues i guess you could say there was there's some of it with the pets carrying over like you could go for all pets on leagues that's true passively, God. but like that's crazy yeah no, that is true. There is that, and there is, like, the little, I guess, little rewards, cosmetics, and POH themes that come to the main game, but it's like, eh. Anyway. Uh, yeah, the, the, uh, the, you know, the rewards for actually doing the league are, are uh, just so pale in comparison yeah. to the actual fun of playing the these crazy accelerated game modes. Yeah. That's the most fun, is just... It's like the most fun is the two weeks so of fast. it. The first two weeks and then it just dies. And just the slowly. first like hour where, you know, everyone spawns in like Varrock and they're all naked, like with like the default skin. They're just they're just booking it to the struggle to security. <laughs> you see an army of like bots, like like you know, the, the Bob uh like the bot outfit that the the you know how your character looks when you don't uh, change your character at all in the character creation menu. Like, you just have a bunch of yep. those guys just running through. It's so funny to see. It's, it's so hype at the beginning, dude. It, it really is. Yeah. I had so much fun watching all the leagues. It is fun time. watching. I'll have to consider playing or not. It's just going to be... One it's up things. to you. It, it's just a quick little burner project. It's not like it's going to last that long, right? Yeah. So you feel like you're not taking away too much of your time in the main game. And if it's making you play RuneScape more, then I guess that, that would be a positive if you find yourself not playing yep. as much when there's no league. Well, shit. What else do we have? I think we've like pretty much covered everything. So you quickly... Uh, well, we never went through Dead Man. I don't think we're even going to talk about Dead Man. There's um, people that are more qualified to talk about Dead Man than us, too. Or oh, yeah. Oh, 100%. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we went through Raids 3. We went through uh, Combat Achievements, me having fun with the game. Um, I'm hoping people PM me on Discord, uh, being like, Hey, Guppy, hey, you want, you, want, uh, you want a teammate, dude? And I'll just be like, Oh, God, please, yes. Take me. Please, uh, please carry me, Daddy. <laughs> uh what else do we have uh well we really like like before this cast like when like the day that sebe asked me to be on the cast like like i'll be i was like yeah we can discuss more about topics later and then we just never pm'd each other and then we don't have any sort of like notes to go off of or twitter topics we're so just, we're just sending this without may, any... maybe there's something we forgot to talk about but i'm pretty thrilled that we covered this much already yeah. so we, we could probably wrap up here um uh, I guess I never said congrats on getting your mace finally. I, I'm so super much. Thrilled. See, that's the thing. So much has happened since uh, you last came on. We definitely have missed a bunch of stuff, and thank you because uh, that mace grind was 
it's horrible, but it's Dude, over. Dude, I, I love your uh, I love your rent a tile thing going on, Seracnus. Whoever whoever came up with that idea needs to get modded if it wasn't you, because holy fuck, what a brilliant idea! That... So I just look at your stream and you're just killing Seracnus, and and you just have like disco tiles everywhere, like like it's so full at this point, and it's like twenty five dollars a tile, and like almost every tile is rented out. Like like, dude, you're gonna have to start like mortgaging. So, so listen, people. so I'll, I'll give a little bit of uh, insight. So first of all, that idea came from Alfie. I went to Alfie's stream and he started highlighting tiles for the same price. It's like five. Oh my God, that's tiles. genius. And then, and then I was, I was giving all the credit to Alfie and then Alfie was like, no, no, no you got to give all the credit to Bastilla who I'm pretty sure they're like dating or something. And, um, anyways, she was the one that gave the idea to Alfie and then I just saw it on Alfie's and I did it. But it has been such an eyesore to look at. So this was a this was just an idea for a month. I was like, let's just try it out, you know, you know, whatever. It has been horrible to look at. It's been giving me a headache. So we're we're clear. We're bulldozing all the properties. September first. The properties are getting bulldozed. Well, th that was already guaranteed that they were going to reset each month, um, because they would just fill out too much and just be obnoxious. So they are they're getting cleared. And I'm going to come out with a new idea. I think one thing I'm thinking is permanent properties, but you can't do it in the Seractus layer. It would be at like certain clue spots or something. Oh, well, so, that's so interesting. You would just see your name like whenever you go to like your clue spot or whatnot, instead of just it being this horrible fucking circus in the, you know. <laughs> just like the worst pit. clue steps in the game, like that elite clue step, like like south, or sorry, northeast of like Soul Wars. Like, just oh, be, like, God. <laughs> If you're reading this, you got fucked. Smile. <laughs> yeah, like shit <laughs> like that. There's a lot that, of potential so. there. Well, well, yeah, that it was a it was a fun idea for a little bit, and then it started getting way too filled out, and it's been just horrible to look at. So we're, we're bold. Yeah, it. having all those tiles concentrated in one area probably can give you a headache. Like, like I know, like looking at my uh, tile markers for the thieving room and solo CM. It's like pretty wild looking at them because I have every chest color coded oh, based on the, like the poison, uh, where the poison can be, right? Because yeah, yeah, every yeah. chest has like th three other sister it, yeah. chests that uh, can share like poison and bats together. So if I've got like poison in a green chest, then I know bats have to be in a green chest. And I just have disco tiles of every color. Uh, every chest that can be bats is marked a different color pretty much in there. And, uh, yeah, it can be an eyesore to look at. I know when I used to stream Soul CM, people would see my thieving room for the first time and they'd be like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> and in my chat every so often, I'd see, like, this guy asking me, what the fuck's going on in your thieving room? And I'd explain it. And, uh, yeah, you probably have to explain what's going on in your Seractus lair every so often. Like, I've explained it all the time. Exclamation mark, uh, rent. <laughs> I'm just like I'm sorry that you have to look at this because it's bad for me to look at it, but I can't even imagine the viewers just sitting in there just staring at that or you know just like oh. I bad. mean that's that's where you're gonna be for hundreds of, or sorry thousands. Of that's hours, exactly dude, why I need to get rid of it. It's, it's only been like two weeks, and I'm just like, yep, yeah, this this cannot be a permanent thing here. Like this is horrible. <laughs> Anyway. oh yeah it's a genius idea yeah i think we've probably covered enough i mean we we've we practically already beaten like most people that that are that have a cast or you know what we <laughs> never talked about um what? is uh other casts that, that was the thing we were talking about before uh before we started the recording is like like we could probably talk about like all the different save a cast like like rate like which ones we like the most which ones we didn't like uh you know, I want to hear. I, it from I mean, you. I don't want to shit on people. I want to. I want to hear it from you because okay, here's the other thing: is like, yeah, there there doesn't need to be any like, uh, you know, you just say like the good ones and maybe some of the, you know, critiques or whatever from other ones. But like, some people haven't heard any of the Sebe cast, and I was mentioning this before to you, like the the Sebe cast. Every episode just says Sebe cast and then the person's name. It it never goes into any like thing we actually cover. So. Some podcasts you do a pretty I watch. good job in the channel description, though, of uh, of telling like what the person is like. That's like, true. Uh, but... Like in my cast, you said that I was like uh, a really smart player and really enthusiastic about the game, which which was like it was just a short summary that described me perfectly, and I thought that was more than enough. You don't have to have this epic caption yeah. of like. No, but it's like, like it's uh, like uh, the. You know. I guess that's in the description, but some podcasts will even have it, like in the title, like they'll just name it like this is what we're talking about and it gets a lot of that clickbait but when you just say somebody's name and they never even heard of the name they just aren't even going to click it so i want to hear from you like what what have been your favorite cast and what are the things that make them your favorite 
oh, this is where I'm going to start shout-outing people. So, a bit of background story on, like, me listening to casts. Um, so, I was listening to the cast very early on. I think by the time you got to, like, cast 5, I, like, learned of, of your cast. And, and I already knew of your stream, right? So, I knew, like, oh, yeah, this is, you know, someone that I really like listening to. I, I bet the... I bet the guests are going to be just as interesting and they're going to have a good time and this will be something really good to listen to while I'm playing like the game or even if I'm going out for a walk I'll just like put on a cat a, like a Sebe cast just to listen to it each Tuesday. Um so I've 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 listened to pretty much every cast at this point uh from uh Jukebox Romeo to uh Randy was the last one, yep. right? There's only a handful of casts that I like stopped listening to halfway cuz I was just not vibing with the opinions. Um like the first half of the lane cast was like really good and uh I was like really impressed with the uh, with how knowledgeable she was of the game and like her opinions of the game were like really good at the, at, at the time but then there was like something that just like really turned me off uh, halfway and, and I just like <laughs> lost interest I guess just some of the opinions were just way too hot of takes for me to take so uh yeah, I, I stopped listening to to some of the cast. I don't want to like list names. I guess I've already listed someone. Not not to hate on on them or anything, but yeah, like uh, no, and this is like your own opinion. Not all cast are created equal. Yeah, yeah, like uh, like I don't know. Like, I really liked the lane cast. Uh, there was definitely some like heat going back and forth too between like our different <laughs> yeah, perspectives. like uh, like one of the cast like almost before or after that uh like defied jay like i loved how defied jay had like some crazy hot takes yep. that i never thought of Def defied jay was a really good task uh, uh, task <laughs> really good um uh cast i should yep. say not task cast um I, I loved some of the hot takes he had, and he's got that Australian banter going on, right? Like, like he was a great person to listen yep. to. I loved it. I like the defy jay cast. Uh, of course, uh, uh, Adicon was lovely to listen to. Um, he's obviously incredibly knowledgeable and extremely talented at the game, and I I just like his like overall vibe of just uh you know like he's really calm and collected. He he was good to listen to. You know what cast really surprised me with how much I liked it? Rigandau. Yeah. I was so surprised. Uh, the the vibe he gave us off was unlike anything I've ever listened to in any of the casts. He, he had this extremely mellow, mature vibe. I think I think he was probably the oldest person on the cast. Maybe that was the result. Um, yeah. No, him and Foe, I think, are the oldest. They're both in their 30s. Yeah, Foz was good as well. He he's got that star power, of course. You, you can't help but love the guy. Um, Rigandau might have been my favorite cast, I think maybe. Wow. Yeah, no, that just, one. Just listening to just a you know a man that's learned from his mistakes over the years, and a man that's set a path of redemption for himself. It sounds, it it, it sounded really great. He's a really uh, good. It's he's it's soothing to listen to. His cast was short too, and yep. and every time I have a I see a, a Sebe cast on my YouTube feed, and it's like an hour and a half. I'm like, almost like unhappy at the the guest already for having a short <laughs> cast. But after listening to Rick and Dow, I totally don't mind that at all. Yeah. Um, I I'm definitely gonna make a tier list of the cast. I think at some point, um, at oh, maybe shit. like the 50 mark or like some uh some milestone number, maybe maybe 40 even. And uh, I feel almost bad putting myself uh, near the top. Top or, one, like, two, no. and three. Part one, part two. <laughs> well, maybe things. not part two. Part one, like my first cast was was good, I think. Because uh, yeah, like I haven't even listened to my own cast, right? Because because uh, I, I listen to the cast for more insight, and I don't really want to listen to like myself talk about things that I've already talking like talked about. Um, so I almost feel like me being on the cast is like a waste of a week because it means that, that I can't listen to, yeah. to a cast for a week. It's like almost negative in that <laughs> regard. Uh, but yeah, like uh, you have a good variety of guests on your cast. And I, I think it's cool that I'm recapping it too because I'm like the first repeat guest, right? Yep, so I feel like are. more than anyone, I'm probably the one the most uh, qualified to, to talk about like you know the Sebe summary of uh, of all the people that have been on the cast. You you have your like you have the super sociable people that that really hate RuneScape. They like they're just basically there for the social aspect, right? Like like uh, Uncle Lopsy, Secon, 
Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, whale, whale as well. Uh, like the people that just like they just don't give a shit about the game at all, and they're basically there for the social aspect. Yeah. Um, like I mean, yeah, like you can tell they're not nearly as enthusiastic of the game. Uncle is just like, oh yeah, dude, I fucking hate the game, man. Like, <laughs> like the, the dude like basically played RuneScape to farm partner, and, and then he stopped playing. He's just like, just the day he gets partner, like, oh yeah, d hey guys, I got partner. Time to play fucking. <laughs> Ratchet and Clank, dude, like <laughs> Wario fucking world. <laughs> like, oh man. Yeah. And and those cats are the long ones too. Like those are the ones of people that are just being like just sociable guys. And I, I really appreciate those cats a lot. Um I'm glad you I like think, both. Uh, th there there's like I see in the comments section of certain casts, like people be like, You gotta talk about RuneScape, man. Like shut the fuck up <laughs> about other things. Like and but then I get people that are like, I really wanna go into like these guests and like other stuff besides runescape so i have to get like that balance right where it's like some guests we barely talk about runescape and then some that's all we talk about so i, I think you have a good balance of uh of guests like like you have guys that are they just go in deep on the game like myself uh port Cassard as well i love the guy so yep. uh, like he he's almost like one of uh one of my friends almost like uh so it was like having a friend on the cast and and listening to him talk it was like it was like listening to a, fam a familiar voice you know yeah he's so awesome i like the i like poor kazard a lot uh I, but yeah i like the social people the people that just hate the game with all their guts uh, they they have their own like special place on this tier list that i'll probably make i'll probably just have a tier of just like the sociable guys that just hate the game <laughs> just put them all in the same tier just slap them all in and and that's uh and that that's that um yeah, like uh, like Rendy was like the perfect balance for me, I think, of uh, of like IRL and the game, because because he'd talk about all these things he do in the game, and I never heard the perspective of a bug abuser playing the game, like him finding like weird shit, like like this pu priest in peril thing, or yeah. like like it, him talking about the the space race to the first level three fire cape. Yep. But he'd also talk about his own, like, like his mental issues and, like, how he would cope. And he would talk about his, like, alcoholism. And uh, it felt like I was talking to someone that, like, had real grievance uh, who was, like, sort of, you know, again, like Rigondeaux, like, set a redemption yeah. course for himself. And, and it's, it's great to hear people like that, that uh, they learn from their mistakes and they grow as people. Like, like the maturity... Of the people that you get on the cast, it's just truly marvelous to to hear about, and and those people also have their own like special contribution that I think is really important to the overall Sabe cast experience. Yep. Now I'm I'm extremely satisfied with like this past. Just what's crazy is I do a cast every week almost, and we're already at 35 casts, which is like over a. Yeah, over half a year. We're getting to the year point. I know. And, and you know what's crazy is that you're going to start having more repeat guests soon because once you get to that year mark, like, people that have been on the cast are going to be up for grabs again. Yep. Like, when you asked me to be on the cast again, I, like, reluctantly was like, it's pretty soon. Like, you really want to do it <laughs> this soon? Like, like, uh, like, there's still people that haven't watched or listened to my, my first and even the second part of my cast or even the ramble I did with you, like there's people that haven't listened to that yet. So I felt like, you know, maybe give it a little bit more time, like let those people that haven't listened to me, uh, the first time I was, I was on, like have, give them that opportunity and then they can listen to like the return of the King, maybe. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, no, that's not to put myself on too so, high of a pedal. So, yeah. so next, I mean, that's what I'm really excited about. I'm, I'm, I've loved this cast because it's just like, repeat we already you already know what's going to happen it's a say bay cast there's no like kind of like awkwardness at first it's just like we go right into it um and i do have some other uh previous guests planned for these next few weeks potentially you'll you'll oh, you guys will awesome. find, I, I don't even want to leak anymore because i'm not leaking guests anymore unfortunately people are getting butthurt at it but i'm this I can't this, this uh this cast was rock solid on uh on confidentiality like yeah no one's gonna see no this leaking good. and uh <laughs> no leaking and uh no but it's really exciting because there's so many more guests i i have like new guests that i want i have a list look, look i have a list it's actually on my rune light i have a list of 25 names right now of people that i want to get on the cast 
That's awesome. Like 25 names. And that's just like a list I thought up in like five minutes, basically. And like people I really want to get on and like plan for the rest of the year as well. Like a lot of them. And so it's exciting. But yeah, the repeat guests are going to be like the really cool ones. And uh, one guest I want to get on. I'll just, I'll say this one. I want to get Dan Gleesack on again. I, uh, he's the, he's one of the skiller guys. Yeah. He, he got 200 mil all and he dipped from the game. Dude. And... He's, he's got, he's got a crazy attitude on him. I love it. Like, like I love how <laughs> just, uh, like, like his sense of humor is like, it's a subset of, of, uh, people that you have, like no one else has been on the cast with that kind of like, sort of like, fuck you attitude. Yeah. And I yeah. love, I love that part of him. He reminds me of Randalicious as well. I loved, I love how good Randalicious was at telling stories. Like I knew when he was going to be on the cast, like beforehand, like oh dude, this guy is going to have just the best stories yeah, to listen now, to. Randy's... and he really did. He was, he was top tier for sure. Shout out to Randalicious, dude. Randy's really fun to listen to. But Dan, nobody's even like. I want to get a person on that's like done with the game. Like, what have you been up to since you stopped? You know, like what have. Like, oh, that's a good point. Like that's like, the, the stuff I want to hear. Like, what is what's been in your what's been happening in your life since you like graduated from the <laughs> graduated from the game? But like you know. Well, I mean, I've I've sort of graduated from the game at this point. Like, I'm still playing like here and there, but but uh, RuneScape's not my main focus at the moment. I'm actually streaming like very often, but it's not RuneScape related. I've been playing a lot of Zelda Randomizer, and uh, oh, I've gotten I've I've actually gotten to the point where I'm pretty good. So I'm like racing people and like winning races and shit like i'm playing majora's mask randomizer at the moment and i'm having so much fun with that it's like it's so addicting that i I'm, i hardly have any time to play rs but yeah if, if you want to check me out playing zelda Wait, randomizer we're gonna have yeah we're gonna have it. your twitch link now i don't think we had your twitch link in the you know what's cool one. is that i got i got affiliate uh or i got a like the the email to get affiliate yeah the application for affiliate this morning so uh yeah we're gonna get that soon we're gonna have channel points baby oh hell yeah okay uh, yeah we're shit I, everyone, I, go I mean, <laughs> everyone go follow well guys. i mean you don't have to panic follow me like the, <laughs> like what i'm playing is so incredibly niche like like i'm playing majora's mask but yeah. i'll probably be playing ocarina of time uh as well soon because uh i've just been having so much fun will you these randomized this long term here's my question now will you stream your inferno grandmaster tasks all right, so there's one person in my it, it, that's that watches like all my Twitch streams, like like this dude's in like 75% of my Twitch streams. Like, like you probably had that too, like when yeah. you were streaming, like like you have this one guy that's like your first like your, you know true like your regular, viewer. yeah. Like like I I have one of the regulars in my in my stream. His name's Sulfur Dreams. And and he comes from a RuneScape background, right? So he's always bothering me to like, dude, you got to stream RuneScape, got to stream RuneScape, runs the RuneScape stream. <laughs> so I, I guess it, it's going to be inevitable at this point that I'm going to end up streaming RS more. Uh, I just have to get a stream layout for it going. And then I just, yeah, like I can start doing Inferno and stuff that actually people would be interested in seeing. Yep. So I, I think probably RuneScape streams will happen very soon. I just have to like, get back on the grind you know like like i'd have to take away time from playing uh like racing zelda randomizers yeah no what that's exciting man i'm uh, i'm i didn't even know yeah, you dude, were streaming like, until like, you uh, literally told me like right before the the cast today oh hell so yeah i'll be following like you. i don't I, even think i, I watched the cold one shout out to cold one he was also in the cast i loved listening to him too like he, he played he he was playing uh majora's mask randomizer and i think he's the person that got me into playing it because, uh, like, I, wa I was watching it, I was like, like, it's something i played before, but it's not something I've, like, really tried to, like, grind out and, like, play uh, and be good at. And I've had a lot of fun playing it long term. J just, like, randomizer aspect, like, sometimes you have these really niche scenarios that you gotta solve, right? Like, like I've seen, like, so much uh, new shit happen, even just, like, like, I've been playing so much, but I still see new things happen all the time. So it's exciting, like like the all the scenarios that can happen in a randomizer setting. So playing it uh, like in that sense has been really fun. Like I'll just pop off when something really dumb happens that can only ever happen in a randomizer. So yeah, shoutouts to a cold one for getting me hooked on Zelda Rando. Uh, I watch like all of his uh, Zelda Rando streams as well. So they're awesome. very addicting. I love a cold one. He's just he's a king. Oh yeah. 
dude can i i just want to make a shout out to the entire community honestly like like i love the old screw and skate community big time like like all the people that are like really popular and at the top like they're they're really really respectable people um well maybe not all of them like uh i, I don't know how i feel about oda blocks uh <laughs> attitude but oh uh you know what dude he's he still has his niche in the market like people want to see like the ice poseidon sort of figure in the community and that's what oda block uh fulfilled so uh you know what shout out him anyway uh I i'm just grateful to be in such a good community and that's what keeps me playing the game and what keeps me motivated playing the game even if i don't play like very much nowadays like it's still like, a big part it's still it's a just... really beautiful community yeah. of just people that i so many people that i i share connections with because we're all the same age we sort of have the same sort of background like it, it's just a game that fits me so perfectly and i do not regret a single day playing this game uh, in the six years i've been playing iron Four. so yeah, I'm just grateful that uh, we have so many, uh, you know, interesting characters that we can ha we can see really shine on each individual Sebe cast, and uh, I'm really proud to be a part of it as well. Maybe maybe I have less of an influence on the community as I should, uh, because I'm not a content creator, right? But but I still feel like I I fulfilled a a sort of a niche, even if I'm not making you know YouTube videos all the time or tw or streaming regularly on Twitch. But yeah. Yeah, I'm just I'm just grateful to be part of this wonderful thing, I should say. Well, shit, man. I think we'll wrap things up here. Uh, definitely gonna have all your links now in the description. So your Twitch, you don't have a Twitter though. I guess what do you no have? Twitter. Oh, you just uh, I well I I just use Discord. I don't okay. I don't like Twitter because it's like why would I make a Twitter just yeah. for escape? You know. So we'll have your we'll have your Twitch and then we're also gonna link your YouTube just so people are aware. I remember just for the two videos yeah. that I that I made basically. But yeah, I'm also on Discord. Like 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 the first cast you linked my Discord name and, and there that were people there. that actually actually did message me. Like they had questions and and there were people that that messaged me just to say nice things about me. So like really grateful for those people as well. Um. So yeah, you can link my my Discord, Discord again. again. It's, it's okay. just BC Guppy and then the hash icon and then seven one eight nine my number has never changed okay so if anyone just wants to like you know have a chat or like has a question like they can just pm me on discord i get it's not like i'm a big content creator right so i don't get pinged all the time for things um i i seldom get messaged by like you know people that aren't my uh close friends so uh yeah i'll uh, reply to pretty much anything that's sent to me awesome just, uh, Hit me up on Discord if you have any questions or concerns, and yeah, I'll just uh, address them. Shit, man, three and a half hours. Hell yeah, we, dude, we did <laughs> we it. Didn't think Who we need... needs Twitter topics, dude? We, we didn't think we'd even pass two. We were like, well, we'll just kind of wrap it up around two. You know, we don't need that. We don't have any topics, so let's just. No. I, I I just gotta appreciate the you know we got some good chemistry going on, and it's really fun chatting with you. We we should really like just chat more often, even if it's not for a cast scenario, yeah. right? Like just you know just like see just check out uh, you know how how you know how's it going Seder like. Like what? What are you up to? Uh, how are you liking streaming? Like you know, just, just I'm gonna feel. To I'm just gonna feel like, like almost obligated to record regardless because it's just like we always talk about some cool stuff, and I just want to share it with everybody. Because just... oh yeah, Guppy, you uh, you don't. Uh, so yeah, I don't have a guest this week. Uh, yeah, <laughs> want to just talk shit, kind of dry on content, mate. You want to give me some free content, dude? <laughs> well, I mean, shit. Yeah, like uh, I I still appreciate coming on the cast even even after like i've done a couple by now yeah it's really fun just you know getting it out there i, I don't really i hardly have a, a medium for like you know talking about uh, my opinions on on the game like like i hardly even talk to anyone about my opinion on the raids three rewards so getting a getting like a a way to to vent my frustrations or to you know give my praises is is you're providing that for me and i really appreciate it yeah, and we're, we're going to have you on probably, who knows, before, not before too long. Like, we're going to probably have you on again, so. We'll see. Um, You know, like, we'll see the reception that this cast gets and if people really do want to see more of me. Yeah. Um, and if you guys want to see more, I, below in the description, go to the Patreon. We got some deleted scenes. If you're just craving for some more, we got two big deleted scenes from the previous Sebe cast. So, uh, yeah, go check it out. But, uh, yeah, before we take any more of your guys' time, we'll, we'll wrap things up here. And uh, BC Guppy, 
a pleasure as always to talk to you. Hey, babe, it was the pleasure is is uh is mine. I I really have fun having like a, this big long conversation with you. And and it's and lately it's, it hasn't been often that I've been able to like go off on RuneScape. So yeah, it's definitely a pleasure to be on the cast again. Well, thank you for being on it. Thanks for uh taking your time out of the day. So, okay guys, again, not leaking who's on for next week. Uh, but it will be the first time ever two guests on one cast. So, oh shit! Oh that that's news to me, dude. Two guests that's gonna on, be exciting. Two guests on one cast. I'm not gonna leak anything more than that. I could. I could just tell you briefly of just you know. But I, I'm just gonna keep it simply. But there will be Twitter topics for this one. So keep uh, in touch. Follow my Twitter down in the description. There'll be topics uh, for you guys to give, and that'll probably be on like thursday or friday so thank you guys again peace out we'll see you on the next one